Hey, what's the deal, people? It's your boy Big Star here, man, with a classic, a special edition of Legends Week, man. And I say special because, you know, this is definitely my era, an uh, individual that I watched um, and admired in the McDonald's All-American game, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the 1994 McDonald's All-American game. My man Kareem Reed, um, you know, NY, he's going to get on here. He's going to tell his story, man. Um, definitely a legend, man. Um, I believe he, um, yeah, he was definitely, a, you know, 1994 McDonald's All-American. Um, played at Arkansas. Here we go. The best kept secret. Yo, hear me? can you hear me? <laughs> Hold on. I'm good. Can you? Can it's, it's, it's breaking up a little bit. The reception's breaking up a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to go outside, man. I'm getting ready to go outside, man. Enjoy the, enjoy the weather. Uh, you you, you know. get comfortable, man. You, you get comfortable. We're going to be here for a second, man. I appreciate your time. You get comfortable, and we're going you know, to get in there, man. Yeah, my, my dog, man, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. The best kept secret, man. It's good to see you, man. Good to see you, too, man. Good to see you, too, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just... No, I was, eating, I was eating dinner, but I had to come and show my guy some love. Let me get right so I can see I'm everybody. In, and everybody. There we go. Yeah, take take your time. You know, get comfortable. I'm in your world, man. I, I appreciate yeah. you giving me your time. So just you know, just take take all the time. Nah, you need. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Get ready. Give me a seat. And I'm good. Yes, man. Yes. All right, there we go. What's going the, on? What's going the, on? The best kept secrets in the building. Big Star Raw Sports Legends Week is going down, man. <laughs> well, I'm here. I'm here, man. You had some. You, I mean, you had some great legends before me, man. Some that, that paved the way, man. That you had on, you know, you interviewed and had on your show, man. So it's an honor for me to be on, man. No doubt. Hey, well, two two things I want to you know mention to you before we get started. Um, you know, two like like the whole mission with Legends Week, man. I'm I'm a true historian of the game. Um, I love to pay homage, you know what I'm saying, anytime that I can. So two things, that's uh, it's the reason why I do this. Um, one is, you know, I definitely don't ever want anyone to forget about Kareem Reed and your legacy and all the things that you gave to the game. You know, I watched you. It was it was the 94 McDonald's All-American game, right? Yeah, nine, yeah 94, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I watched that. I watched the game. You know, I admired you just with your size and just how, how dynamic you were out there. So I just never want anyone to forget about your legacy. And two, um, I want to just, you know, do my part to educate this younger generation on individuals like yourself, man. So that's why we're here, just paying homage to, to, to a great one, man. Yes, big shout-out to my, my, my guy, man, Lenin, Lenin, Lenin man. Yeah. Over there at Georgia, man. You know, that's my guy, man. We had some, we had some battles, man, college and, and overseas in France, man. That's, that's my guy. Yes, that's the glove. That's that's Pennsylvania's glove right there. That's the glove, bro. That's the yeah. That's the you know. I never got a chance to play against Gary Payton, but I know, you know, Lennonham, boy. That was the closest thing I got to you know. If I say anybody that 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 you know we went at it or whatever and had my tough nights, I had to get my rest the nights before playing against him, man. No doubt, no doubt. Wait, we are gonna get right into it, man. I ain't gonna tarry. Um, we're gonna, before we get into you telling your story. Um, we're just going to play a little quick little thing I call um, 10 random questions. I'm going to just shoot 10 random things at you um, just to kind of get us warmed up, all right? Okay. All right, and one other thing, um, for all the viewers, um, you know, anyone who sticks around to the very end of the broadcast, I'm going to go into a nice little Q&A, just let the people, you know, go back and forth and you ask you a couple questions. Okay, no problem. All right, also, quick shout-out. We got another legend in the building. We got my man Donnie Carr. Roman yes, Cash, I see him. D Car, D Car, you got some, you got some <laughs> legends going on, man. You got some, you know, it's legendary here, man. Clicking in. That's man. right. Hey, so real quick, um, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? Favorite cartoon, uh, Batman. Batman. No doubt. Um, most points you ever scored in the game at any level, high school, college, pro, anything. I had a, a seventy-point game in my neighborhood on Burnside. A seventy-one-point wow. game, yeah. A seventy-one point game, or what? Like, a, like what, what? What? What grade? What level? You know what I mean? Uh, what? I was, I guess I was. My transition, maybe coming home from college one year and, and playing in, uh, you know, God bless the dead, and it's, it's a legend in my neighborhood, and that's basically, my, you know, if you know the story about me, my best friend Manzi got killed when we was uh, fourteen, fifteen years old, and you know, basically every year we do uh, the Manzi tournament in my neighborhood, and I had, I went, I went crazy in there. You look, no you got doubt. a legend. You got your boy. You got my brother, my my brother from another Sham Garden. Hey, God shout out. We, we got 
We got Sham God in the building. We got man. God, Sham God, legend, God man. man. Salute, man. Go, go follow him, and man. He's doing what he does. His shoe just dropped last week, two weeks ago, man. You get a chance, go pick it up, man. Hey, Sham God, if you're watching, Big Dog, I appreciate you, man. Your legacy definitely got to get you on the show, Legends Week, man. Got to definitely want to, um, you know, pay homage to your legacy as well. Talk about the shoe and everything. So when I get done with this, man, Sham God, we, we definitely got to connect, man. That's love. That's love, man. I'm super humbled by that, man. Hey, so oh, so next question. Um, uh, favorite food at the cookout? So a summertime cookout, what's on your plate? Uh, I guess when growing up, it was, you know, it was, of course, growing up where I grew up, it was always... You know, a good old cheeseburger from the grill, man. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Um, think, thinking back on your high school career and all the gyms that you played in in, in, in NY or, you know, when you guys, you know, I'm sure your school, y'all played a national schedule or y'all was just in yeah, NY? Yeah, we played a national schedule, yeah. We played a national schedule, yeah. So when you think back to those memories, um, what's the, the – What's the, the your most favorite gym that you played in that you remember playing in? Whether it was like the structure of the gym, the atmosphere, or whatever. When we talk about structures of a gym, of course we got to go to to you know my high school, St. Raymond's, man. When you walked in there, you know now it's it's totally different if you've been in there. But you know now it's the lunchroom. You know we it was a small, packed in gym. You know I could say that you you came in there, the baseball players was beating up on the AC and things like that. You know. Look, another legend. I'm sorry, butter, butter. Uh, a a Adrian Walton, man, butter, butter. Good, you know he's doing. He's out doing street first podcast. Man, he just got you know just interviewed Jamal Crawford, man. Got them legends in there tonight, baby. You no know, doubt it's going down all broke, because of you. I you, appreciate you it. Man. You brought them out tonight, you, man. man. You, you you know legends bring the legends out, so I appreciate you, man. <laughs> yes, and of course I I guess us going to uh, BCI every year. You know people call it AAU and stuff now, but us going to uh, BCI in Long Beach and playing in the pyramid out in California, Long Beach. That, that you know, that, that was a different thing. You know, it was really shaped like a pyramid. They called it the pyramid. It was a great, you know, a great gym. No doubt. Um, so coming up, um, like, like during your high school years and all that kind of stuff, again, you know, during that era, was somebody that was either one of your peers or maybe a couple years ahead of you, somebody that you looked up to in the playgrounds, in high school, anybody? Somebody that you kind of admired, patting your game after? Well, I mean, of course, growing up, and I just posted it yesterday. I mean, you know, basically it was, uh, you know, it was it was Kenny Anderson growing up. You know, that was that's who it was, you know, growing up and idolizing him, you know, and then being around and going to war with, you know, Stephon and, and, and Ray Foss and, of course, my bro Sham God, you know, like I said, so that's that's what it was right there. I had a – I had a – I had a uh, – I had a role model with Kenny Anderson, well, not a, you know, idol, which I try to pat my game after, and then also having peers that I looked up to or, or friendly wars with was those three guys: Sham Guard, Rafa, and and, Sham, and uh, Stephon. Wow, legendary man! Uh, what what are some other sports you know besides basketball? Any other sports that you that you possibly played growing up? Uh, of course, we, we know in the neighborhood growing up in New York, and of course, in all these neighborhoods and low class, you've got to play everything. So, of course, we got to play stick ball, you know, things like that. Not really baseball, just stick in the ball, stick ball. We play, you know, we play all kinds of sports. I got to play, you know, football too. You know, we, you call, we, other people call it two hand touch, but it was, it was with us, it was, it was, it was rough tackle, actually, you know, of course. two hand rough, you know, <laughs> in, the, in the streets of New York when we blocked the streets off and, in the snow, one of the cold, snow, snowy days in New York City, we got a chance to play football. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. That's what's up. Um, who, like, why, you know, NBA, who was some of your favorite NBA players back then? I mean, once again, growing up, I mean, my favorite basketball player growing up was, in, is to this day, you know, everybody's going with Mike and things like that, but I was a Magic Johnson fan. You know, I was a okay. big Magic Johnson fan or whatever. So that, that's, that's the way it was. You know, I was a point guard growing up want to be a point guard so of course you know you idolize or the best point guard that was doing it at that time was magic johnson in my era so that's who i really you know really admired and watched growing up gotcha during during your pro career um, all the different countries that you had played in if you had to have made one of those countries your home you know for the you know for for the next chapter of your life which one of those countries could you have seen yourself settling in i guess france you know that's the i spent the most time there and things like that so of course it has to be france you know, with 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 the much the much success I had, the the way they took a kid from you know New York in and and, and and treated me like I was their own. You know, it was a great great country or whatever. And I always you know I always before, after my playing time, 
I used to go back over there, whatever, and, and participate in the street ball tournaments over there, the Quad 54. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. That's what's up. So last question of the uh, 10 random questions. Um, you, met, you, met, you definitely mentioned a few, uh, few legends, um, you know, earlier when I first started asking you questions, but when you think back to your, um, to your high school I'm days, sorry, yeah. We lost the grads and we beat Quad. grads. Hold on. We, we lost the grads and we beat grads. Oh, yeah. Everybody asking me about Simon Gratz. I mean, that was a battle, you know, with, 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 with Red, with uh, Red Smith and Rasheed Wallace and Stokes and all of them. You know, we got a chance to play them in, uh, I think, Florida one year or whatever. We had beat them when I was a sophomore. And then turn around my junior year, we wound up losing to them in Hershey, PA. Well, it might have been my senior year. But, yeah, of course, battling. I battled with Gratz. I battled with Dunbar in the Charm City Classic. It's legendary mm. coming down that pipe. Crazy, crazy stories. We definitely gonna get it. We definitely gonna get more into that. Definitely gonna get more into that. Um, during your high school days, or you know, a college days, coming back, you know, back and forth to NY and all that. Um, who, who was like the? If you had, I mean, I know this is probably an impossible question, but who do you think is the best player you've ever witnessed play in, in NY? Whether it's playgrounds, leagues, high school, you know, grown men. Who, who who's the you're, you're the best person you think? If you could I mean, pick one, like I said, that that's hard, man. Like I seen, you know, <laughs> big shout outs to Master Rob, you know, and Malloy and Dribbling Machine, you know, going, you know, God bless the dead, Cotton Hines, you know. So with, when I when you say that, it's it's I can't, you know, I yeah, can't yeah. mention it. It's too much, you know. At any time though, that's one thing. Growing up in the city, if we say Chicago or L.A. and anywhere you talk about Pennsylvania, D.C., it's kind of hard, man. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To put to put something out there like that, but I mean, you know, big shout outs to the, the street ball players that that paved the way for us. You know, mm -hmm. Master Rob and and Dancing Doogie and Tip Dog and Mike Boogie. You know, with names like that, you know, Richie Adams. You know, the game that was my, I think that was my introduction and in my 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 street ball introduction. Seeing that game like that, you know, with Mr. Sightman and and and, and stuff like that, guys like that, where. I'm walking uptown home and I'm seeing people on the gate. I'm seeing a line around the corner. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Wow. Like, this is street ball. Like wow. that was my first street ball game, seeing guys like that. And then, you know, taking trips when Lonnie Harrell and, 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 and having Barry Farms and coming down to Baltimore and getting to play against Kurt Smith and all them guys. So you when you say that, wow. you know, I, I've been everywhere, <laughs> man. You know, so it's, it's, no it's kind of hard, man. I no see, doubt. No you know, doubt. I play with some great ones, and I got to watch some great ones. No doubt. All right, so how I like to, you know, to, to conduct the interviews with the legends, you know, um, first off, like, I really respect your voice and just, you know, your, your articulation and your ability to tell stories, so I, and I don't want to get in the way of that. So, um, what I, you know, how I like to do it is this, I'm going to just let you freely just tell you. So I have some questions, but I'm going to just let you tell your story, and I'll interject whenever I need to. But if you could just start us off, man, by just, um, you know, reintroducing yourself for the people and for the audience, and then just letting us know where to... Uh, Kareem Reed's story begins and, and where it all started for you. Well, again, this is, uh, you know, big shout out to my guy, man, Raw Sports Film, man. This is Kareem Reed, a.k.a. Best Kept Secret, a.k.a. Lean With It, Rock With, a.k.a. Big Game Reed, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm originally from, you know, I was born in Harlem Hospital. At four years old, I moved to the Bronx. So, I'm, you know, I'm BX all day or whatever, stuff like that. So when I got the chance to introduced to basketball. My my brother my brother took me down to to 125th Street to get some sneakers, some tennis shoes to play basketball in or whatever. New Jordans was coming out. You know, people in my neighborhood, I was just a low, you know, I was just a little kid coming up in my neighborhood. I love basketball, but I wouldn't go out my neighborhood. Okay. At at nine, 10, 11 years old, but I was always on the court with some of the older guys. So one day he's like, man, well, I'm gonna take come with me. I'm gonna get you some Jordans tomorrow, or whatever. You coming with me? I'm like, hell, you know, hell yeah, whatever. <laughs> wound up getting the sneakers or whatever and wound up, after I'm getting the tennis shoes, he's like, yo, I got practice. Yo, come with me to practice. Wound up uh, going with him to practice. And that day at practice, they only had nine people, nine people, nine kids show up that day at practice. Gotcha. So the coach, you know, my brother's like, yo, he, my little brother could play. And, you know, big shout outs to, you know, Warren Miles, my brother, and, you know, Thurman player, you know, I went to Young Life. That's who I started off with. Anybody, you know, watching this in New New York City basketball, Thurman player, Young Life, wound up going in there and playing and practicing with them. So that's really where my basketball really took off. You know, basically me getting a chance at 12 years old 
to to play at and play with some of them guys that was older or whatever. And excuse me. And just for instance, like you said, introduction. I was just a you know basically a park like not even saying a park legend, but a, a, a ten year old, eleven year old guy that was pretty good. That not, nobody really knew about me, you mm -hmm. know. So that you know, with that, that was my first introduction of of basketball. And you know, thirty years later, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's still what what was the make of me, you know, growing up in the Bronx, New York, traveling to Harlem and playing with Young Life, and then from Young Life, making that jump over to Riverside Church with Riverside, Riverside Hawks. You know, rest in peace to Mr. Lloyd. She gave me another opportunity to to play, you know. So, you know, going over to Riverside, going to play against all the top guys from Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Tri-State area, Staten Island, Long Island, where now my, like, went from a little local team to now a national team, you know, with mm -hmm. likes of, you know, the Malik Sillies, the Adrian Autries, you know, the Brian Reese's, the, you know, guys like that that made up Riverside that played before me or the, or the guys that paved the way for them. You know, it was back then, you know, you got a Riverside bag and a Riverside jacket or <laughs> vice versa, a Gaucho bag or Gaucho jacket. You yes. were somebody. You yes, know, you, yes. you like made, a rock star you, coming through the hood. <laughs> you was a rap star. So was this oh, like you know, like AAU kind of organization or just like lo you know local things? No, it was organization. It was AAU. Like when I like I okay. said, when I went from Young Life, it was more of a a New York a New York based team. Okay. So now when I get up to Riverside, it's you know we going you know Providence, Connecticut, oh, France, wow. uh, gotcha. California, mm -hmm. Arizona. You know that, that we took off. You know mm -hmm. things like that. So that gave me another. Another look before I got ready to go to high school, you know, that I was going away already before mm -hmm. that. Before that, I was going away. So, you know, my first year, I went to the legendary St. Nicholas of Talent Time. Okay. And, you know, of, of course, you know, the Malik Sillies, like I said, I mentioned before, the Brian Reese's, the Adrian Autry's, you know, they was number one in the country, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, things like that. And that year, I, I wound up playing JV as a freshman. Gotcha. We was one of the top teams in New York City, top teams in the country, you know. In New York City, we won this, you know, we won the city championship, played with some great players then. And then three days after I win the championship, you know, that team that I played in ninth grade, we finished 35 and 1. Wow. And we won the championship. So that, that next week in school, I get off the bus to go to school and the newspaper, the paper, the you know, the news reporters outside, my school closed. Wow. Valentine closed. Wow. So that's why, you know, when people affiliate with me St. Raymond's, I went to Talentine first. Okay. You know, so like that. So, you know, my transition and going to St. Raymond's, I didn't know where I was gonna go. Mm -hmm. I wound up going to two, three public schools for one day. I wound up considering other Catholic schools, but you know, I, I built a relationship or, you know, Gary DeCesar, which is, you know, like a father figure to me, reached out to Mr. Lloyd and was like, I want Kareem. I want that left hand little point guard, Kareem. Yeah. And what was, so, was, was, was basketball one of the um, um, factors in your choice of going to another school? Or was it like you just, just going to another school because it's school close? No, of course. Now, now, I'm, now I'm, I'm wide open. My nose is wide open. I'm, 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 I'm going on trips. I, I'm seeing Adrian Autry and Brian Reese. They, North Carolina, Syracuse. Oh, so you, uh, you, you was chasing I'm, the dream I'm, at that point. Yeah, <laughs> I'm chasing the dream now. I see I see guys making a living of this. And now people that I know that I can touch are going to the NBA or going to get college scholarships. So I'm like, yes. oh, man, this is this is serious. I might never, you know, you know, when you're growing up, you probably say, oh, you want to make the NBA or whatever. But, you know, that's outreach. That was a reach for some of uh -huh. us, you know, coming from where we come from. And uh, it started being more realistic. Got you. You know, and then it even became more realistic when my first two weeks into St. Raymond's, I walk in the gym for open gym, and I see Lou Conaseca, Tom wow. Benders, Behan. You know, I'm seeing I'm seeing coaches in the in the in the stands watching us just open gym. We coming out the weight room. Excuse me, we coming out the weight room, and it's 
who's who's in there? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, what what is this? You know, like this is this is for real. You know, guys, what I'm saying? I like coaches I seen on TV. I'm like, seeing yo. coaches on TV, or you know, this is when you know, like really when I'm getting to, I'm starting to watch college games and stuff like that because some of the people that I know are in college now. Of course, of course. So, I'm seeing these coaches that probably I would have never seen before, and they are like, wow. So. <laughs> After a month of school, my coach comes to me and say, hey, man, they asking about you. Wow. And I'm like, what? I'm in 10th grade. I'm going to the school. I'm a new, you know, I'm the new kid on the block. I'm feeling like an outcast because, you know, juniors and seniors that been through the process that same race, it's guys that they already had coming in, you know, it's it's war now. So I'm mm -hmm. like, nah, they not asking about me. Yeah. You know, so I'm doing the thing. They not asking about me. That, you know, and he's like, man, what you going to do? You know, like, you want to play JV again and maybe, you know, kill average 30 points or you want to play varsity and learn? Yes. You know, and I'm like, wow, I had just watched them two weeks ago because they had just won the city championship. Terrence Rencher, big shout out to my man Terrence Rencher. Like, when you go back and say another role model, that was one of the guys, a left-hand guard from St. Ray's. I watched them in the city championship and leave – Oliver Antigua, I mean, Orlando Antigua, guys like that. So I'm like, they gone, mm -hmm. but they just won a championship. So I'm uh -huh. like, I want to go there. I want to yes. play. You know what I'm saying? And we playing, like you just said, I'm this is the number one top five team in the country at this time. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? I'm looking at USA Today, and this is St. Raymond's High School is top five in the country. And we we, and we then found there, the night. There was no there was no ESPN top. This it was like USA Today was the USA thing, Today. So you on like Tuesday, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tuesday the best twenty five teams is in that on that centerfold page. That's right. So I'm seeing on that or whatever. Then I'm looking at the the schedule. We got we got City of Palms or whatever. We got uh Charm City Classic. We got Beach Ball Beach Ball Classic. Mm -hmm. So I'm like. Bet. <laughs> bet. I'm looking at the teams that's in there or whatever, and I'm like, okay, bet. Yeah. So, first couple of games, you know, I'm, I'm playing scrimmages. I'm playing good. We're getting a good continuity. And the third game into the season, the senior backcourt get in trouble. Something happens. Wow. And this is your, your sophomore this year, right? This is my sophomore year. This is my gotcha. sophomore year. Me, I don't, I'm not thinking I'm going to play major minutes. Uh -huh. and not nothing Because, I, like I said, I had it. I had to wait my turn. It was some seniors just, and just juniors. Going the process. Yeah, I'm going through the process. I'm trusting the process. But then I turn around and we're at the airport and coach like everybody here. And I'm like, we like, nah, the seniors are the two seniors are not here. He was like, they won't be here. Wow. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm like, huh? So I'm thinking once again, because you know, if you know Gary DeCesar, he's he's mine. He's he's getting in your mind. He's preparing you for things like this. Yeah. And that was like Huh? Did, like, did, you, going, wait, wait. Going... did you wait? Did you did you panic in that moment? That's like your teacher coming up to you in in class and saying, "Yo, you ready for your 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 you ready for your presentation?" You're like, not, wait, not, I got I got I got to do mine right now." Like, wait, did not you not like that? not because because you knew what that meant. I'm sure. Yeah, not not really. I was prepared for it because my whole thing was after now I'm fitting in. We already played a couple of games. I was in, you know, I was already into two three games. I like got first game we played against Malloy with Shandu McNeil and guys like that. And I was already thrown into the fire in the city. Okay. Two, three games. And that summer going into that year, I was I was starting to feel myself. So it was okay. like, okay, I'm going in there to take names anyway. So so it wasn't like you was you was just riding the bench and but and this is the first time no, you no, like out said, here. The, the first okay. the first game of the season we playing against uh Archbishop Malloy in at Malloy in Queens. This Kenny Anderson, I'm in my I'm in my idols high school. Looking at his jersey, he's at the game, and I'm like, "Wow!" And <laughs> first into the first quarter, coach like Kareem, come on. I'm like, huh? <laughs> and I think that was it right there. I was if you if you ever tape wise, if you ever if any, and I don't need to get that tape. That was the moment, you know, when I took when we rewinded. That was the moment when I probably was like, "Oh, right, you for real?" Yeah. Because, you know, we just playing exhibitions. I'm playing, you know, five quarters. But it's nothing like, you know, exhibition. And now it's, the season is here. The real Open deal. Open night of the Catholic school, after, of the Catholic school conference, you know, I'm going in. <laughs> and playing major minutes. So that one, that, that, that trip going to Dallas, when he said that our seniors wasn't going, 
I was like, okay. <laughs> so we playing against, you know, our first game we play against, I think, uh, Charles Smith. Wow. Uh, he was one of the top players in the country. The second game we play against 6'5", six, 6'7", six, Damon Flint. You wow. know what I'm saying? From Cincinnati, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I got past that, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, the 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 – the meat of, you know, after that, it was like, okay, I'm getting a little comfortable or whatever. Then we fly out to Florida. And I'm sitting in a hotel watching George Michael Sports Machine. And they like news break or whatever comes in, and it's Jason Kidd. Wow. I'm in a hotel watching this 6'5 point guard from California Cause they they previewing the, the uh they previewing the the Florida tournament. Yes. Like I said, so they talk about our school. They talk about all the schools that's in there. Yes. And now they got a big piece on this guy Jason Kidd. This, wow, you know, crazy. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so the seniors are back on the team at this time. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go back to my role. Back whatever, to the original. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. You know, I'm good. I, I you know, but I got a taste of it. I got. I got went in the ring. I got punched. You know, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I woke up. That's right. So now I, I'm, he screams, scream, come on, again. <laughs> so when I'm getting up, I'm at the scorer's table. Yes. And Jason Kidd gets a rebound and throws a bounce pass 93 feet. <laughs> One bounce up to his, up to his guard. I'll be up to the guy that's finished. I'm like, oh. So now the ref is like, I'm still amazed. They trying to bring me into the game. I'm like, <laughs> like I'm like, still that's amazed how it's going like he did this. <laughs> I'm like, I got to guard him. This is the number one <laughs> player in the country. Not, you know, this is Jason Kidd. We, wow. wound, up beat, we wound up beating them. Wow. Yeah, it's somebody saying true story. We wound up beating them. I think the next night we beat. Wait, wait, oh, Rashid. pause there. P pause there. So how did it go? What, what was your, like, what was your contribution to that game? Like, what did you do, you know, guarding kids? Did you have to guard him or no? I did every. I mean, we we played up-tempo. We pressed or whatever. I He probably had a triple-double. Okay. But me, we won. Got you. Got <laughs> so, you yeah, know, I wasn't expecting to do anything. Now, everybody's there to see him, this and that. I uh -huh. was nobody. Yes, yes. But I helped. And I might not have held my own. I might have had five, six points. I don't know how, like I said, well, I need to go back to that and see what I did. Really, yes, yes, you know, yes. After, the, after we get off this, you just bring up memory. No so doubt. <laughs> and see what 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 was the results of that. No but doubt. But I know we got that. I know we got that W. For real, yeah. So now you put that W into that, and I think we wind up. We won. We beat Rashid and them the next night in the championship. Oh, Simon Gratz. We beat Gratz. Wow. So that wow. you know. Then we go to, uh, right after that, we leave to go to beach ball. And he said, somebody said, you play solid. I think we wound up beating Dunbar that year, too. Wow. Like, yeah. Oh, like Dunbar. Dunbar was Keith Booth, uh, yeah. Dante Bright, yeah. Mike Lloyd. <laughs> like, <laughs> they had Syracuse, Maryland, UMass. Like, Legendary you know what I'm saying? Team. So it was, it was Liddy. Yeah. It was, you know what I'm saying? Liddy, so. We came back, number two team in the country. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't play a game in New York until January. So, nobody really seen. They were just seeing paper clippings and stuff like that. So Yeah, and there was, there, was no, there was no social media, nothing like that. So There was none of that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was, you know, you get your little – if your coach call, you get your little write-up in the paper or whatever. Yeah, the, like it, that. The, so, the local paper still yeah, keeps that. New York Daily News. Yeah. So, nobody – you know, this is Stephen A. Smith still writing for the New York Daily News. So yeah. they don't know. They don't, you know, they don't know. So, you know, our first game in New York City, we wound up playing Rice. Okay. Felipe Lopez. Felipe Lopez. Wow. Yeah, they got to the gym. Wow. Like, we, I, we started. Like, me and Felipe, my, Felipe and myself started New York City basketball moving, the Catholic school lead moving because our schools were so small and we bringing out two, three to 4,000 people. We had to move into arenas or to college gyms. Yes. We couldn't play. We yeah, we couldn't play. We couldn't play into. We couldn't play in uh our schools because they were so little. Wow. So yeah, so us going there, whatever, and having a good sophomore year, we lost in the uh, guess in the quarterfinals. Yeah, real to, quick, real quick. How, 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 tell me about how many times did you um? That was your sophomore year. You played Felipe. Y'all played Rice that one time. 
No, you know, we played them, played them twice. You played them twice today in your conference. Yeah. But I don't know in the Archdiocese that we played them. I think we might have beat them or they lost in Archdiocese. So when he got okay. to play them twice. Yeah. So, so tell but me. My senior, but my senior year, we played them. I just seen the paper. I think we played them six times. <laughs> wow. What it was, was it like? Yeah, it quick, was like, just stay there for a second. What was it like playing against Felipe, man? It just describes oh, to the people how he was, man. He was, he was crazy, man. He was a man among boys, man. Like <laughs> this guy, he, you know, we talk about Sports Illustrated, LeBron James, man. This guy was Felipe was on, on, on you know, it was he was on the Sports Illustrated, man. Felipe took a whole community, Dominicans. Shout out to the Dominican community. He took a whole section of New York City, a whole culture. And had him behind a, had him in our gyms, had him everywhere playing music. Mm. You know, like playing, walking, walking with him down the street, playing beat. If you ever played in Dominican Republic or you ever been to Dykeman Park when they play the drums and all that at night, this is what Felipe did, man. Wow. He had, you know, he walked on with a, he walked in with a Superman cape on, man. Wow. Felipe was different. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> That's my guy, Felipe Lopez. That's my guy. Yeah. Well, continue. You was talking about your um sophomore year. Continue. So my there. sophomore year, it finished up. It finished up. We lost. Uh, we wound up. It's crazy. We wound up winning by three. The first game of the season took we we beat Malloy, and then wound up losing to them in the quarterfinals of the state playoffs and the city playoffs by the same, the same three, the same three points we beat them by in the beginning of the year. They beat us at the end of the year. So that. That ended my sophomore year on a sour note. Gotcha. So it was like, okay, now the whole summer I'm working because now the seniors graduated. Yeah. This is my team now. Or well, right. you know, That's Tyler right. Brown was, you know, Tyler Brown was there, but I was like, now it was like, okay, I'm starting point guard now. You know, we mm -hmm. still had now we had some up and coming seniors that was juniors the year before, but like I said, we were ready to take on all. You know, we felt I, I, after we lost. The underclassmen team, the underclassmen were like, yo, we're coming back. We're going to win this. That's right. So we worked hard that junior year, and I had an outstanding junior year. Same thing. We wound up playing, you know, the three years I was in St. Raymond's, we played a national schedule. We always played, we played Dunbar. We always played Gratz. We always, we wanted that smoke. We went to Alaska, like, in high wow. school, I went, you know, I went to Alaska. I went to Puerto wow. Rico, you know. We, went, we posted that went to Puerto Rico. We didn't get the gold. At that time, but we went everywhere. Like I said, I had, we had three sneaker contracts. Wow. We, we, well, we had, I had maybe four or five. We was Nike. We was Adidas. We was Reebok. We was LA Gear. We was K Swiss. It was like, you know, I never seen, you know, we was on like Gary the Caesar man. He, he was on a whole different level. You know, he's he was his right hand man with Sonny Facaro, the Pump Brothers. You know, this these are guys that was influenced. George Ravelin. These was the guys that. He was connected with, you know, mm -hmm. his wife, big shout out to Pam. She worked for the NBA office. So wow. he was building character in us, you know, you know, at our 15, 16 years old. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. You know, but he was a, he was a maestro with it. You know, he was putting us in situations. Look, uh, 30 years removed from high school, I'm still, I'm living in Arkansas. Like I had to ask him the other day, like, you know, that was his plan, his mental, because I got a chance to come down here in high school. Uh-huh. You know, I got a chance to go to Texas. I got a chance to go to California. So when you look at my, my five schools coming out of, you know, coming out of St. Raymond's, I already had unofficials to these schools or already visit the state, you know. So he was always, you know, and we never duck, duck no wreck. Whatever, if somebody was above us yeah. or, Corinne, you want to be a McDonald's All-American, here goes schedule. He's going wow. to put a schedule. <laughs> He gonna put a schedule, the schedule together, so it could be done. Get so that type of exposure be, against the best. You know, you're gonna, exactly. Basically, you're gonna be a, you're gonna be a, 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 a all American, a McDonald's all American, or a Burger King hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> and get exposed. <laughs> and that's what he told me. He told me this one. I can't remember my senior year. He told me that. He said, "You want to be a McDonald's or you want to be a Burger King? You want to be a, a burger at Burger King?" No and doubt. I'm like, I want to be at McDonald's. He said, no okay. No doubt. No doubt. Well, 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 get on this ride and, and take over. Here go the keys. No doubt. No doubt. Real quick, before you continue talking about the high school career and how things are playing out, 
describe your game. What, like, what type of player were you? And, like, what were some of your strengths on the court, especially at your size? I guess my when everybody talk about me and everybody say my story, and that was my story. I had had a heart of a lion, you know, like I said, undersized, but I had a heart of a lion, and I and I and I was a teammate. I think I guess I, anybody that played with me, I was a great teammate and a great leader. Like mm -hmm. I knew who to get the ball to at the right time, where they liked the ball, and things like that. So when I say that, I, I had a heart of a lion. I can I can make. You know, when you talk about Kyrie, I can make shots that was unbelievable. My layup mm -hmm. game was so, you know, everybody say at 5'9", 5'10", how did you make some of these layups? <laughs> you know, I had a, you know, I was faster than anybody. Like, I drove on that. You know, I was faster than anybody. So, when you look around, and my whole thing was predicated on my defense, like, early on. Like, how we talk about Linehan. I might not have been as great as Dumb or would have grown up, but at 11 and 12, I'm picking you up full court. So mm -hmm. when the other eight people was down the court, yes, I might have stole the ball already, and laid it up. You don't no know doubt. what happened because I, that's how I was. I'm, I'm picking you up from when you come in the gym because that was my my thing. I was the growing up. I was nobody, so I was I was the I'm going to hunt. I'm going to. I was like an animal. I'm going to hunt. You know what I'm saying? Whoever I got to go do whatever, and this is what it is. I had to go hunt. And you know, then I had great teammates like you know, big shouts to June. Like I had. I had, I had, not saying soldiers, I had I had wolves with me that wanted the same thing I wanted. So it made the game easier for me. Mm -hmm. No doubt, no doubt. So to continue, continue talking about, um, I think you left off, you about to start talking about your junior year, I believe. So yeah, my junior year, I came back with a chip on my shoulder. I'm starting to play, I'm starting to play 155th. I got, you know, I'm starting to play, you know, I'm starting to play 55th. I'm starting to feel myself. I, I came back like, yo, I'm getting ready. I had, I had goals. Uh -huh. Jesus sat me down that summer. And then, of course, that summer, I got a taste of the ABCD. Okay. And it's the first year ABCD. That's what happened. I wasn't on the radar, but like I said, my coach with his, what he do, he had Sonny Vaccaro and all of them, good friends. So he's like, I'm going to let my sophomore go out there. So That's I got right. the honor to go out there as a sophomore to go to ABCD with some wow. great players. Gary Honeycutt, Randy Livingston, yes. and things like that. So. I got to go. I got to play against some, 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 some real deal guys. Where, where it made me, you know, my sophomore year going as my junior. I was like, wow, I got experience of that. And I was like, oh, when I come back to the city, oh, it's over. It's going down. You know, <laughs> that year I'm getting to play 55th. I'm, I'm, I'm killing. You know what I'm saying? Like the same year. So coach was like, I was ready. You know, come in the gym. Coach was like, whatever, you know, whatever. I'm, 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 I'm getting, I'm in the game. Coach is telling me what he want me to do. I'm listening to him. So it, it, it came natural when it, when it went to that. It just came natural. So my junior year, we was ready. Like I said, we had a chip on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I wanted, to, I know, no McDonald's, no Old City, no, no nothing. If I don't get a city championship, I wouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? So I knew that all the great players, you know, in St. Raymond history has city championships. So I know mm -hmm. I had to get me one. Gotcha. You know, if, if I'm not playing on that on that Saturday afternoon or that Sunday night, <laughs> you know, in the city championship, my junior year would have been a wash. No doubt. So that was the so, ultimate goal. You know, <laughs> you know, especially, like I said, I had Stefan on my back, Sham, they sophomores now. They on my back. They, they starting to get, rec they already was getting recognition. Like, so I was like, oh, nah, I got to, you know, they already took my stuff. So I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. They not going to – uh-uh. And it was still some older guys, Sheldon Jefferson, Sherwin Anderson, you know, Jamal Robinson. It was some guys that I played with that summer that was on the radar also. Uh -huh. So I traveled – that year, I didn't get the – I didn't play with my, my age group. Mm -hmm. I played a year older. Gotcha. I played with the juniors. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting – like I said, I'm getting to see Randy Livingston. Mm -hmm. Jack Vaughn. I'm getting to see all these guys in, in BCI and in Arizona and all that. So I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, next year, you know, I'm going to take my lumps and my bruises this year, but I know I'm going to be ready next year going into school ball and stuff like that. And which I was. My junior year, we took off. We, once again, we top 10 in the nation. <laughs> uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm averaging 17, 18 points. Had a couple of good, you know, better, good games. We went at it with Felipe and them again. We wound up playing Dunbar. You know, we wound up playing 
Simon Gratz again. Mm -hmm. So once again, I, I'm 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 making my state. I'm making my fame a claim. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, this is what I want to do. So I tip that off with you know playing against Stefan. We wanted to beat Stefan that year. Wow. You know, what, what, what was that like? Through. What was that like? Oh, it was great. It was great. We read 30, 35 points. It was great. It was 35, you know, like I said. <laughs> you know? But like I said, he was, this is once again, these guys had names. Stefan yeah. had a name. Stefan uh -huh. was the best sixth grader in the country, best seventh grader. You're like, Stefan been, you know, so it was like I had to beat the, I had to beat the best to be the best. And that's yes. what, that's what, I, that's what I did. I had a chip on my shoulder every time. And I think, you know, I contribute coach the season for that. He made it like that. He made me angry at everybody. Okay. And I tell that story. I, I was self-motivated. Uh-huh. You know, people were like, man, you know, me and Sham laughed about it. Like, to this day, people probably thought me and Sham hated each other. Uh-huh. But that was just uh, love. You know what I'm saying? It's no, you know, in war. You know, friendly war. Yeah. That's yep. what I call it. You know, because off the court, I'm your best friend. That's right. But when we got when we got between them ninety four feet, you be like, "Yo, what? Dad, what's the matter with well, Kareem today?" Well, like me, <laughs> Kareem really like me. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> so that you know that that was the that was it. Like, man, he don't really like me, and I'm like, "Yo, I, we cool." After the game, you be like, "Dad, they're together though." Exactly. <laughs> but it was like that. So that was you know going into that. So then that led me into my city and city. My junior year, we won city and state. Okay. So city championship, we wanted to beat beat, beat McClancy, a good McClancy team. We beat Sham and them in the semifinals, and then I wanted to beat McClancy in the championship. Had thirty five points, thirty seven points, matter of fact, in the city mm -hmm. championship game. And, and then which, we got little, and the junior year. Um, this was the junior year. Y'all played Sham Garden them in the semifinal. My 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 junior year and my senior year, we played Sham Garden in the semifinals. What what was it like uh, playing against Sham God, man? How tough? Oh was the my city? God, that was that was the best. You know, <laughs> getting to play against, you know, Sham. You know, going down as the best, one of the best ball handlers in the, in, in the country. You know, the guy. You know, and getting to play against him, where you know everybody. That was it. That was once again. That was rivalries. We bring mm -hmm. the whole city out. He's bringing my neighborhood. He's bringing his neighborhood. I'm bringing my neighborhood, and we going to war. You yeah. Know what I'm hey, did, like, you, and, just curious, did you did you ever did you ever? I mean, I know that's you know the sham god, and you know you, you I ain't ducking no wreck, but like it, it's the crowd, and you know if, if the new, I'm sure the NY city, you know, the New York crowd is just like the Philly crowd. You know, Chicago, all big cities, the fans just want to see the highlights. Yeah, sometimes, but sometimes the fans could care less about who win. We want to see highlights. So, did you ever have any concern when you go on ninety four feet? Like, man, I hope I don't get embarrassed this game. This sham guy, like, because you don't know what he's thinking, or, or, or uh, yeah, that, that didn't cross your mind. Never crossed my mind. Once again, if, if it was gonna happen, it was gonna happen because what was the whole thing about it is you best to know Kareem is coming back at you. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's what it was. So my thing was, yeah, you know, you you know, you have to because. I'm coming for you. He's That's coming right. for me. So my thing is, it wasn't. It ain't like today when no you come to the thing and nobody's guarding nobody. Yeah, you know, nothing yes. like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't. I wasn't scared to get shook. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Now what happens if I if I rip him or yes. I steal the ball yes. or whatever? Now and that's what you know. And that's what it was. <laughs> and you know, so it was different for us growing up. And we played against each other so much. It was just like a regular, you know, it was a regular day. Got you, got you, got you. But it wasn't a regular matchup. It's not, not saying regular day, nothing against, like I said, but we had played against each other so much uh -huh. that we knew each other game and stuff like that. Or, like I said, Sham would do that in the game and keep keep it pushing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the game went so quick, it ain't like, oh, he shook me, he going to stand there and wait for me and all that like it's now. Yeah. He did his move, he got <laughs> off, he did something or whatever, and it was – to make a move. Like I said, his move was, and he tell you, I think he tells everybody, you know, I heard an interview with, he said, that move was to get away from somebody, not for the oohs and ahs. Yeah. Sham did that on TV in an, in a, in a elite eight game mm -hmm. on CBS. Yeah. It was something, like I said, it wasn't a, he wasn't expect. he didn't expect no oohs and ahs. Mm -hmm. Like that wasn't, that's not an ooh and ah move. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? They turned that into an UMI move. That was a part of his repertoire. 
yeah. the low dribbling coming up the court between his legs was more deadlier <laughs> than that. You see yeah. Sham coming up 94 feet, <laughs> feel like his knees is touching the floor and his hands, That's... and he's throwing it between his legs. That that frightened you more than <laughs> the Sham guard. <laughs> he didn't even make, you know, the Sham guard wasn't even invented yet. <laughs> like he tell you, he, he was doing a move and he wound up losing the ball and that's why the sham guard, you know, I don't want to tell his story, but that's how uh -huh. it was invented. Mm -hmm. So things like that. So it was it was nothing like that, like I said, because, you know, it was some other guys in there, Sherwin Anderson. It was some other guys with, with handles, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying? So the, the handles came a dime a dozen back, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah, everybody gotcha, had their gotcha. little, little handles or whatever, but the uh -huh. flashiness was, you know, and that's one thing, like some New York City guards were flashy, but can use it in the street ball and in, in real games. So if you ask Linehan, you ask anybody, same thing I did in street ball, I did on CBS. I did in Sweet 16. I did it, you know, I did it everywhere. My mm -hmm. move, Like I said, it wasn't a move, but my <clears throat> game was, I could take my game anywhere. Gotcha, gotcha. So how, tell, me, tell me a little bit, uh, a little bit about your, sum up the, the, senior, the senior season. Uh, the senior season was, you know, of course, it was more... <clears throat> It was more maybe stressful for me because, like you said, I wanted at that same time the the birth of my son. You know, my my uh, son's mother was pregnant with with my son. You know, uh, that I had that going on. And it, what funny was, my junior year ended off. It, it started off great. Like I said, I mean, it ended off. I won a city and state championship. I, I took two weeks off. Okay. And I struggled in ABC. My next year, ABCD, I struggled. Wow. I was I was still on vacation. I didn't work out. You know, like I said, I was living life. I'm I'm a junior. I just made first team all city. You know, so I didn't I wasn't in the gym or anything. Mm -hmm. And didn't make, you know, I went to camp and came back number seventy seven. Mm. Wow. At a hundred players, I was number seventy seven. <clears throat> and I was I was hurt by that. Uh -huh. So, you know, I'm like, man, I'm trying to make the McDonald game, blah, blah, blah. I was hurt by that. Mm -hmm. So I wound up taking two weeks to myself, getting in the gym it with Co myself, getting in the gym it with Coach DeCesar, getting in the gym every day, charting clock. My guys, uh -huh. being in every day or whatever. Stuff like, I, didn't, I turned down five-star. I okay. said, I'm getting in the gym. I'm yeah. getting in the gym. And when I came out of, when I came out of quarantine, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 17 MVPs in a row. Wow. I won everything. Wow. <laughs> so it, I won everything going into my senior year. So it ended off, it ended off, like I said, it started, it, I, I won city, I won the city and state. Then I wound up having a bad week in ABCD. Uh-huh. And then, then I, then I, I picked up, I didn't go to five star. Okay. And if you know you, if you don't go to that first session of five star, that's where everybody is. Everybody. Yep, and yep. I didn't go there because I wasn't, like I said, I was like, it wasn't me ducking it. I know I was, I had to get my mind back right. So the teacher said, you want to be right? You stand in this goddamn gym. So I just, uh -huh. I, just I, I became a gym rat. I'm, I'm, so after that, I went crazy. 17 MVPs in a row. But I won everything. I, like I said, if you, if you Google that and then you look at, I, I ended the summer off with that golden hoop, the classic. If you look on there, that was me against Stefan and Sham and Felipe and all of them. Wow. It, was our, it was our newspapers All-Star Week, Harlem Week. Wow. And that's how you, that was the back to school jam. So, so, so that and was I, a, and like I, a, so, pretty much all star, the best of the best. These the are best these, of the best. these are the players uh -huh. to watch do, during the school year, kind of thing. Yep. <clears throat> wow. So, who who was all who 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 all do you remember from that? And just kind of anything you remember from that experience, like describe that. So, for like me. I said, I had that was a, it was great because what happened was, like I said, the whole summer, Stefan's the number one player in the country at this time. Felipe number one. They they number one and number two. They playing on the same team, and it was probably. You know, the laugh about Kareem, you know, Kareem wasn't doing, you know, uh, you know, whatever. So that game for me was personal. You know, me and Steph had our own, me and Steph had our own battles. But mm -hmm. that game, it was like Brooklyn and Queens against Bronx and Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Like it's a picture. I got a picture in my house. I have, well, not, it's not in my house now, but I had a picture in my old house. It was a me and Steph standing at half court face to face. Like it was war. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because it was like once again, it was like he had everything, and I needed it. Mm -hmm. So I went in. I went in with a, another, like you said. I went in with blood in my eyes. To, uh -huh. to, to, to whoever was there, whoever was in front of me, I I had to kill. 
Yeah. Hey, John. John, John Linehan had John Linehan um had two questions real quick. I wanted to get to him real quick. He wanted his first question he asked before was how were you? How do you think you were able to be so successful on as successful on the hardwood as you were during street ball? Because everybody can't make that transition and make it both work. Like, how, how did you make both work? I guess that was one of the things where growing up, where I had a little flash to my game or whatever, and my coach sat me down, coach the Caesar and said, hey, if it works, there's no problem with it. So you got to make it, like you said, you got to find a way where you can in interpret that into your game or where you can make it fit into your game. Now, if you turn it over or you're just looking for a crowd reaction, so if you're just looking for the oohs and ahs, that ain't going to work. Uh huh. So my oohs and ahs became like realistically like I've done this before. I did it before, so it, it became natural, I, I guess, because it wasn't – if I threw it behind the back pass, it was flashy, but it worked. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Now, if it got stolen back – like I said, early in the game, if it would have got stolen and didn't work, it wouldn't have been – I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Uh -huh. But it worked so much, and I knew, like I said, just – you know, Linehan, you know this. You're a great point guard. Like, I knew where to put the ball at. Sometimes, like I said, with the people, like I said, it might have required a bounce pass. Mm -hmm. this, this me getting it to you might have required me to throw it behind my back. Gotcha. So that's what it was. And, you know, at first it was probably me throwing it all around the gym because uh -huh. they wasn't ready for it. You mm -hmm. know, people wasn't doing it. But I, like I said, I watched Magic. I watched Kent. I watched Kenny A. You know, so those two right there, <laughs> I seen Kenny A do, do what he did to Bob Hurley on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, I seen Magic Johnson throw a full court bounce pass. I seen Jason Kidd do it. I seen guys do it in regular games where I was uh -huh. like, okay, I can do it. Like of I course. Said, you know, maybe you only seen it in New York in street basketball. Uh -huh. but I was people doing that. Like I said, I was in California. They was doing it. I was places where they were doing it at. Uh huh. So that's what you know. That's what it was. Yeah, and and Linehan, he also asked. Um, how were you able to do what you did with so much of your game based off the penetration to the basket? Yeah, I'm sorry. This is Caroline Lyles, man. She's one of the top top guards in the country. Small forwards in the country, man. Caroline what's up, Lyles. What's up, Caroline? Big star here. 2022, man. She just got a, just picked up another offer today, man. She's I'm very proud of her, man. That's what's up. Big shout yeah, out to you, Caroline. You're going to hear a lot gotta, about her. Caroline Lives. You're going to hear about her. Man. I got I to gotta, I gotta keep her on the radar. That's what's keep up. Keep on the radar, that. man. Yes. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, John yes. Linehan also said, um, How were you able to do what you did with so much of your game um, based off the penetration to the basket? Because uh, I guess me not being able to coming up early in, early in the age, you know, the New York thing is we don't have no jump shots, you know, mm -hmm. so. I had to get to the hole to score. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, hey, later on in my career, my jump shot developed or whatever. But growing up at 10, 11 in New York, nobody shot the ball. Everything gotcha. was to the basket. Gotcha. You know, so that was, you know, me finishing at nighttime, me playing on a crate, you know, like that. You know, me in my house playing on hangers. Uh -huh. You know, so things like that where, you know, I worked on that or whatever, worked on finishing moves, teardrops. You know, things like that. So, you know, and me growing up, it wasn't about a trainer with me. I didn't, you know, we wasn't fortunate to have a trainer. Nobody yeah. was really doing training. Uh -huh. You know, so, so mine was reps, reps, going to the park. My five going all over, playing your five. You yep. come to your neighborhood, you know, me late <laughs> night, you know, playing against the older kids, older guys. Got you. Hey, so tell me what, um, when you, when you first fit found out that you were um, being selected to the McDonald's All-American game? Or, or first, before we, before that, is there anything else you want to say about your senior season? Or we talk no, about it, 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 it ended <laughs> off, I mean, it ended off, I had some I had some great highlights of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, had 35 in the second half uh, against Rice. Wow. You know, against, you know, I had two points at halftime, finished with 38, 37. I had wow. against that team. I, I won, we won games. We was, you know, same thing. I didn't, I, we didn't end off well. I lost, and I got back. I got back to the city championship. Gotcha. But I guess, you know, it was Felipe's time and that was yeah. I, you know, so he wound up winning. We shot we shot terrible. Like I, I wanna see that game. I know like they said, we, I think we shot me, Charlton Clock, my our backcourt, we shot maybe six for like forty. Uh 
Uh, we wow. struggled that game. Please, I think we, please, wow. we, we we was tired. I mean, we were tired. We we have done it. Like I said, I <clears throat> I went to three city championships. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, what it, I'm was, saying? It, was I was time. <laughs> it was Felipe time. It was Felipe time. You know, that was icing on his cake. And I think I did enough did enough work before then to get selected. I think that game didn't. Not saying it didn't mean anything to me. I never want to uh -huh. say that. But I I guess that week before, I already had a slight slight idea that I made the McDonald game. Okay. And, you know, things like that. So it was kind of relaxed. And we were beating up on them. You know, they, they you know, we was doing our battles. But, you know, I feel like we always had the advantage over them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Things like that. Felipe was going to get his. But his support and cash came to play that day. Yeah. So tell me tell me about that McDonald's All-American experience and um, all the players you played against and what that week was like for you. Oh, it was great, man. Especially growing up. Growing up a great. Especially growing up from New York City and having a game in New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come on, who could beat that? The New York the, the McDonald game in your backyard. So, oh, oh, it was in I, I forgot it was in it was, New, it was in New York. And at that wow. time I I didn't decide yet. So, I really got the Royal U class cuz I was still undecided. Felipe and Zenden already had committed. Uh -huh. And I was still uncommitted. So, oh, Zenden Hamilton. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zenden Hamilton. Like I sent Steve Wojowski, uh Ruben pa I mean Andre Patterson, uh Ralph LaFrance. Wow. Uh, it was some know, legends had, in that game. We had some legends in that game, man. So that game, you know, Donald for you, you know, so, you know, things like that. J uh, Jelani, Jelani Gardner, you know, so, it was, it, man, that, that, that thing was loaded. I mean, everybody has a special McDonald game, but at that time, you know, to be selected the top 20 players. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that was the same year. Remember, AI supposed to have been in it. Oh yeah, yeah but true. Uh, he right, just came. Right. Yeah, he just came. Yeah. He was in, he was arrested. He got arrested that year. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you know, just imagine, you know, me and Allen Iverson getting to go against each other or even team up. Wow. You know, at that game, you know, so it was just, it was just crazy. It was a crazy experience, but I loved it. I wouldn't have traded in for the world. Like me making a McDonald's game in my backyard. My friends and family got a chance to see me play, and also, you know. Thinking I should have won the MVP. Okay. <laughs> if you look at that game, you know, I, I was, I had MVP, I had MVP numbers and MVP, you know, it came down to one vote. And, uh -huh. you know, I'm going to tell this story because we just talked about it. I think if I would have went to that five star the year before, uh -huh. you know, I probably would have got that vote. Gotcha. Shout out to Garfinkel or whatever, but, you know, it was a story where I needed another vote and he just waved the paper down because he was wow. mad I didn't come to his camp. Wow. Should have went to that five star camp. I would have been the MVP of the McDonald's game. That's crazy. Hey, so what um tell me about the high school recruiting process back then. I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the college recruiting process, all the different schools that was after you, and then what ultimately led you to choose in Arkansas? Guess it was crazy, but I mean all along, I guess, you know, when we talk about <laughs> when I just said it the first day, and I had a history, you know, with Texas. Terrence Rencher went there. You know, high five, Reggie Freeman went there. So he was already coming to get New York guards. Okay. So Texas was just in line for me. He had a relationship. Like I said, my coach had relationships with a lot of the coaches. I had uh, University of California, you know, Jason Kidd and Tony Gonzalez was my host. Uh, me getting a chance to come down to Arkansas and play in a King, uh, playing a King Cotton Classic and not know nothing about Arkansas. And then after the game, uh, one of the basketball uh, ex-alumni was like, yo, who is Arkansas recruiting you? And I'm like, I don't know. And then the next night, walking out the tunnel and Coach Richardson and Corliss Williamson and Scotty Thurman's at the game watching us play. Wow. You know, so that, you know, that was big. And then, you hey, know, hey, like quick. I said. Hey, hey, real quick, my father cut you off. I forgot to mention at the top of the hour on um, Instagram, you know, they only give us like hours, hour sections yeah. to talk. So it's count me down, right? And it's giving like a minute countdown. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this one, save it, and I'm, I'm going to start another one in like a minute. So just rejoin me. We're going okay. to pick up right here. Okay. All right. Hey, what's the deal? Y'all, your boy, Big Star. Um, this is the second half of the Kareem Reed interview here on Legends Week. Um, it's definitely going down, man. He's giving out tons of gems, man. I mean, we had some, you know, within the first, like, five, ten minutes, man, we had some legends joining. You know, we got the, got John Lenahan on here. Um, God Sham God joined us, man. It's definitely going down, man. Um, so he just left off talking about um, the whole recruiting process and what led him to Arkansas. Um, so when he jumps back on, that's where, we'll, that's where we will pick up at. Um, and keep in mind, um, 
you know, uh, definitely the, you know, the Q and A uh, is definitely going down at the end. Um, but you know, honestly, as you guys have questions, um, um, you know, that fit the flow of the conversation, you know, I'll just, I'll just, you know, intertwine them in, um, you know, J Mac, uh, you had asked a question. Um, so I'll just, you know, I'll just fit them in and, you know, just, you know, jump, jump, you know, add you guys questions right in, in the moment. Um, you know, definitely if it fits, you know, along the, the flow of the conversation. Um, so we don't actually have to wait to the end. So, um, here we go. All right, we back. So yeah, so you was um you left off. You were talking about um you know what led you to Arkansas. Yeah, you said so yeah, so, yeah. Like I said, so we when we talk about that, we took like I said uh, when I talked about ABCD, my sophomore year, which uh, in Michigan, uh, Scotty Thurman was my counselor. You counselor, wow. you know. Okay. You know, going into that, he was my counselor, and I used to wear my jersey. You know, uh, my jersey used to always be big. I, I didn't fit my jersey, or you know, at that at that year, I didn't get just give me a jersey. Really, I didn't because I was an add on to the camp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so just, just give me out. whatever the size. Just give me a jersey. whatever. As long as I'm in here, you know what I'm saying? I'm in there with the Bannon brothers. Like it's loaded. These guys, these guys, is loaded. It's loaded. Like, it's the best of the best. So I got a chance to, uh, you know, so when I get my jersey, I put it. I put my arm over it, so I got basically it comes out to be the X. And you know, so they was just calling me X, or you know, and I just said, "What he said, what that for?" I said, "That's that means the Bronx, you know what I'm saying, BX." <laughs> so they started just called me Little Bronx or Little X or whatever, you know, Little Bronx. So it was from there it started. You know, I st I, I I always had a relate. I had a little relationship with with Scotty, mm -hmm. you know. So when you know me seeing him and they telling him I was down there playing in Pine Bluff, they came to watch me play. Like I said, the next night. First night they wasn't there. The second night uh, I'm playing against uh, the former the, uh, the point guard that was here before me, Corey Beck's high school. Uh -huh. Philly, that's out of Memphis. Yeah, so they came down. To, you know, they came down. He came down to watch his school at the same time. So when I looked, half of the team was there because at that time they had four or five guys from that, that high school that we was playing at playing against. Uh, they was alumni. They played at that school. Mm -hmm. So they were there to watch also. So you look at it, I had like seven Razorbacks. We had, it was seven Razorbacks, previous Razorbacks watching the game. Gotcha, gotcha. So I wound up going off and winning MVP. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was no communication at that time. Yeah. So coach was like, you know, uh, man, we're going to look, we're going to look for, you know, we're going to look at you. We're going to look at you. So uh, going into that year, like I said, uh, in camp, the next year, Gary DeCesar, knowing what he does, they was looking for. They was at ABCD looking for a point guard. Okay. And he told them, "Yo, you need to go over there and look at number ninety eight. Yeah, There's a little guard there. You need to go look at him or whatever." Because he knew, yeah. you know, coach was big on style. He knew uh -huh. that was my style. That was a, you know, that was a big component with me or with Coach De Caesar. When we talk about these kids now, picking the right school. Yes, yes. So if you look at my three schools, and and the last one we talk about was UNLV. So if okay. you look at these the four or five schools I had. It was all running gun schools. Uh huh. Five nine. I couldn't go battle. I, I salute to the Big East. You got another legend in here, Mel Thomas. You know, five thirty man. You know, like I said, he he played with Sham. Stephon's cousin played with Sham. Jamel Thomas, five thirty. You you bringing the legends out today, man. Salute, salute to Jamel. Got to get you on, big dog. Gotta I got to get you. Yo, on. I need a hoodie. I need one. I need one of them hoodies, man. I need one of them hoodies. So yeah, so uh, we so he said oh, you need to look at nine, number ninety eight or whatever. So like I said, with these kids, that's a that's another jewel, a jewel dropper. I hope people are listening. Pick your right school, man. Mm -hmm. You see all these kids transferring, and like I said, this year I'm seeing hundred some kids in the transfer portal. Yeah, like, that's crazy. crazy. You know crazy. what I'm saying? So things like that, where you know, so picking the right school, and then with with Arkansas, it was like I didn't have my grades at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, oh, I, wow, wow. Yeah, I didn't have my grades. So if you know my story, I sat out my first year here at Arkansas. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I didn't wow. have my grades. So, you know, I supposed to have been on that, that second national championship team where we went back to back, but we wound up losing to UCLA. Wow. So I wound up sitting out. So grades are important, man. Grades are important. I could, I was a make down all American. Hey, real quick, pa pause there real quick. I want, I want to find out. First, I want to address um, my man, Jay Mack, had a question. Uh, he said, playing uh, Riverside yeah. and then um, – yeah. Big Daniel Gafford in there. They playing. 
I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's cool. Um, I wanted to address a, a question real quick. My man Jay Mack wanted to know, playing at Riverside and then like St. You know, St. Raymond's, how did St. John's let you leave? Play, you know. They didn't, I guess they didn't think I was good enough. Okay. <laughs> or, or they, you know, like I said, I was in their backyard. Of course, you know, they had, you know, of course, I'm in the city with Felipe Lopez and Zendon Hamilton. Yeah. So they, you know, they was, you know, they was big on a, a big guard. So they went after, you know, nothing. Okay. Tariq Turner, 6'5", 6'4", gotcha. that went to Oak Hill. They needed, a, you know, Big E's. They probably was thinking a 5'9", God couldn't play in the Big E's. Okay. Gotcha. But after them gotcha. 17, when in the J-Mac, after them 17 MVPs, <laughs> that, you know, them letters, that St. John's, now they knocking on my door. And I was like, uh-uh. Remember, you know, I was I was on my, you know, I was on my other stuff. Like, oh, now, now you know me. Exactly. So really like that. And then, with me, it, did, it didn't fit for me. You know, coming from yeah, Burnside yeah. Avenue, St. John's didn't fit for me. Okay. You know, being, I needed I needed Arkansas. At, at 17 okay. years old, I needed Arkansas like they needed me. So I had to get away. Like, okay. I didn't want to, you know, so really I didn't entertain it after after that because I was like, I need to get far away. Okay. Focus, lock in, because uh, driving, th I would have been in my neighborhood every day. Gotcha. And the story Makes might, the story might, the story might have turned out different. Yeah, that, I mean, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's similar to, like, you know, a lot of my, my Philly legends I talked to as to why they may not have chosen Temple. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they needed to get out, you know, needed to get out away from the city. Totally understand yeah. that. Hey, real quick, talk about real quick, because um, this is a really important piece, you know, that, that you articulated, not making a grade. So what, what, what would take me back to not, you know, fit, when you first found out that you wasn't going to be able to play right away because you know, didn't have the grades, and like, what were you going through? Like in your mind, it, man, not, it, not it, it hurt. It ball. hurt because I worked. Like I said, I mean, I I took it, you know, no knock. I took it maybe ten times, mm -hmm. you know, with 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 every which way I could do it, you know. I, I took it in Michigan. I took it wherever I was at. Like I wanted to, you know, because I was like at the time I wanted a school. I had schools on me, but I I didn't. I couldn't have my. I didn't have my grades. So mm -hmm. any chance I got, I, I went to SAT prep class. If you know, at, that was at Riverside. I went mm -hmm. everywhere to pass it, where I combined scores and all that. So when I did, I passed it. Uh huh. I passed it, went through all summer, got on campus. The second day on campus, it's a letter comes to the school, to the mm -hmm. NCAA, said to the clearinghouse that I wasn't eligible. My wow. SAT was under question. Wow. So I fought it for like a month. So mm -hmm. the season going on, I'm, I'm, I, they, they eliminated me from training. Like, I couldn't practice Damn. anything like before. I couldn't even practice with the team or anything. Mm. So that's what it was. I couldn't practice or anything with the team or anything. So I was eliminated from everything. So Damn. it was kind of hard. Me, you know, me, my, I've only been in here a month, and they telling me I'm ineligible. Mm. Like, I want, it was days I wanted to go home. Like, I wanted to give up and go home and, wow. and, and fight them from – New York in my comfort, but Arkansas made it a way for me to stay here, for me to be a part-time student and, and show me the love. Like, I didn't have to go nowhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not pushing you out. We're going to fight this with you. Like, gotcha, you gotcha. know, I got to be around the team. I was just like, you know, I just wasn't on the team, but I, they treated me like I was on the team. I couldn't practice with them. I used to have to come in before practice and after practice or whatever to get my runs in or what I had to play intramurals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, you know what I'm saying? So that was it. So, but they, they made me feel like this was my home and this is what I needed. Cause I could have went after I got ruled and eligible, my recruiting could it opened back up. Like I you had, could've, you could have jumped in the portal. <laughs> I could have jumped in. The, I could have went anywhere. Then I could have just worked on my score and got re-recruited again. Yeah. Hey. So what? Um. What? I guess the the, the, the my original question. What ultimately? This, what ultimately? Um. Led you know as far as you saying uh, Arkansas is definitely. I'm, I'm sorry. Um. Was definitely the place for me. I guess uh, going into my recruiting, like my recruiting. So if you know my story, my recruiting took place at St. Raymond's. Okay. Because my neighborhood was bad. I was coming in. I was coming from a single parent home. My mom was, you know, into the, you know, the drug game or whatever and stuff like that. So Gary DeCesar, once again, didn't want a lot of people to know my background or a lot of okay. people didn't notice until okay. I got older. He wasn't. My, if you didn't grow up with me, you didn't know this story. Mm -hmm. So this is once again, we dropping jewels. I appreciate so, it, man. Yep. They wouldn't, nobody would have knew this. You know, I, I've been talking about this in a couple of my pod, the podcasts that I have with other people, or whatever. So nobody was allowed to go in my neighborhood. Everything mm -hmm. happened at school. Okay. So 
it happened. I went on the school. They came to the school. We did a home. We did a we did a school visit. Uh huh. School visit or whatever. So after I leave, uh, we get ready to go away. We going away, saying we going. I think we going to Hershey or something. We going away on a trip. So I'm going home to get ready or whatever. So you know, just like me, I'm in my neighborhood on the corner, might be shooting dice, playing with some of my guys or whatever. And uh, it's an old Cadillac comes up in the neighborhood. So uh, <laughs> we like old Cadillac, old. You know what I'm saying? That looked like the police. Yeah. On, on, you know, undercovers. It was the old Lincoln. Uh huh. Old school Lincolns, you know, Lincoln Town cars. Yeah. Those, those are DT cars or something like that. We didn't know who that was the president somebody. We didn't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we sent the, <laughs> we sent one of the nosy guys in the neighborhood to go see who that is. Uh huh. So when he knocked on the window, by the time he must have got to the car, Coach Richardson rolled down the window. Wow. So the guy, the nosy guy in the neighborhood, was like, "Yo, that's that black coach that be on TV. They here to see Kareem." Wow. I got 30 guys on the corner, guns, trench coat, everything, like drinking 40. We don't know what it is. You know, people getting ready to run or whatever. They like, nah, we good. This cut this code risen. Wow. And that right there was everything to me. Like nobody, you know, nobody did that. Everybody followed the Caesar, what the Caesar said. And when they went against that and said they was going to come and see, I, they said, yo, lefty, I just wanted, you ain't got, you know, we don't, you ain't got to come to the, you know, basically, you ain't got to get in or nothing. Like, you ain't got to be, loosen up. I just uh -huh. want to know, I want to know who I, I know, I want to know who you is. I want, I want to come into your world. Eh? I want to come into your world. And that was like, for me, was everything. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm, you know, and then, you know, me coming down to visit this place. I came to visit. It was spring break. If anybody know Fairville, spring break, everybody's gone. Mm -hmm. So it was nobody here. But the only thing I remember is we they set up my plane to get here the same time they got here. So they was in the tournament. I took a visit while they was in the tournament. So when they was coming back from the tournament, from winning to advance to the maybe the Sweet 16 or the Final Four, I was taking my visit. Gotcha. So when I get off the plane, they get off the plane the same time. It was wow. it, it was a coincidence. That's crazy. But, but when you want to say six thousand at the airport, wow, calling the hogs. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like six thousand people at the airport. Yo, you know, crazy. I, you, don't, you don't see this on TV. I seen this. I seen this. Uh, maybe two years ago, three years ago, when Paul George and Kevin Durant. You know, when you see these guys come and, 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 and come into their new market of the NBA and it be people at the airport. The exactly. Family, you welcome that's what there. I saw. Wow, that's crazy. That's what I saw, man. That's crazy. So so tell yeah. me so, 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 so tell me about when you finally get the opportunity to play. Like, all right, so what, what was your first, describe your first practice. What was your first practice like? Oh, the first practice was already, like I said, it was already, to me, I already had seen it before, like I said, because I set out the year before. Uh -huh. So just imagine, they some of the uh, callers and Scotty and all them went pro, and uh, I'm getting a chance to see that. You know what I'm saying? The transition, and then coming in where we got the number one recruiting class in America, five freshmen, five junior college players. Like, we had a whole makeup of a whole new team. Uh -huh. And <laughs> coach gave me the keys because I was the – like I said, I was typically a redshirt freshman. Basically, but yeah. I got to, you know, I got to see that or whatever. So I got to go through coach, you know, screaming and seeing that or whatever, seeing what type of person he was. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So now be able to lead the team as a freshman. Mm -hmm. You know, so our first practice, like I said, we, we practiced at five in the morning. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? With the rest of the day off sometime. But remember, at that time, it was five in the morning at three. And when they say 40 minutes of hell, I, I was seeing it, but I really – <laughs> you know, I never experienced it. 40 minutes of hell wasn't in the game. 40 minutes of hell was before practice. Uh-huh. <laughs> before the practice, the weight vest, the, the running to Cleveland Hill, you know, the, the dropping us off at the mall and say, you better find – don't find it, you better not get a ride back coming from the mall. So that was 40 <laughs> minutes of hell. And him uh -huh. screaming at you at 5.30 in the morning, him, him on you. Mm -hmm. You doing three-man weed with the weight ball. You know, you doing – layup drills with the medicine ball. Like, it was crazy. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But he told us, you know, and even with our, 
I pressed him and all. He said, you know what? Nobody's going to be in better shape than y'all. Uh-huh. So at the 10 minute, like, that was our motto. I couldn't wait to the, the 12 minute t TV timeout. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm looking at y'all, I'm looking at the opponent, and yeah. they dead. And we yeah. like, okay, we, we ready. That's we right. We practice like this. So, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? He used to always tell us the 12 minute or the eight minute mark, you're going to see a different animal. That's you right. Know, and that was his motto. You cut, you know, so that was my whole thing of even, you know, I don't, learning that or with the Caesar, you know, you cut the head off, the body dies. So uh -huh. that was me always mm -hmm. trying to cut the other team's head off. Gotcha, if I gotcha. take the point guard out of it, everything else is messed up. So that was my, you know, I learned that at an early age. So he was right up my alley. His coaching, his coaching was similar to what I grew up with. My my AAU coach, Thurman Player, you know, mm -hmm. my high my, my high school coach, Gary DeCesar, to now playing for Coach Nolan Richardson, a Hall of Fame coach. Gotcha. So 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 take us through real quick your, your college career. Um, any highlights, memorable games? Um, you know, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I had a great, I had a great, I had a great. Great college career. I'm I'm still to this day the all time assist leader at the university. Uh, top, I believe top three. I, I believe I did some research like seven hundred something total, something like that. Seven, yeah, seven seven forty nine. Uh huh. So and like I said, I, uh, I'm a top. I think top three in steals. Uh, freshman year, led a, led a, led a new team to the Sweet Sixteen that we lost to the wound up losing to UMass. Uh huh. Uh, my sophomore year, we uh. But sophomore year, we wound up going to the NIT. Sophomore, we, we all were sophomores. Guess what? It was sophomore jinx. We wound up going to the Final Four in the NIT. I got a chance to come to New York. You know, we, went, we didn't make the tournament. We went post. We went to the uh, postseason NIT. Got, got a chance to uh, play in the Garden in college. Uh -huh. uh, my junior year, we wound up losing to go to Sweet 16 to uh, Utah for Andre Miller and, and – uh, and um, my senior year ended up we lost to Iowa. Gotcha. I, I mean, I had, my senior year we had we beat, I beat the number one team and number five team in the country in the same week. We beat Kentucky mm -hmm. and Auburn in the same week. And and who just were, just bring, bring back the memories. Um, who were some of the players on both those teams at that time? Oh, that that that. But I mean, my freshman year was the the best probably Kentucky team ever. You know, they had Ron Mercer, Derek Anderson, Tony Delk, Antoine Walker. Andre Andre Riddick, uh, Jeff Shepard, uh, Anthony X, Wayne Turner. Like, <laughs> we had 10 pros on that team my freshman year. we go to Rump Arena for Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, playing Kentucky at Rump Arena. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. in my, my senior year, getting to play against that Chris Porter team when Auburn was number one. They was, you know, number one in the country. You know, so, you know, things like that. The SEC was tough. I got a chance to play against White Chocolate. I got a chance, you know, Jason Williams. Wow. I got, a, you know, things like that. You know, I got, crazy. you know, I got, so it was crazy in the SEC, man. I, I wouldn't trade, a, you know, no better conference in the world than that. I know they say Pac-12 and all that, but SEC is crazy. Yeah, who, who do you think, during your college career, who were some of the toughest guys? I mean, you definitely, you definitely mentioned a few just now, but who was, like, some of your toughest guards, you know, guys you had to defend and, and, and you know, uh, uh, you know, clash and head up against? Um, I mean, we played against, through. like I said, he's on here. We played against John Lennon Ham and all. Uh -huh. <laughs> we played against uh, Andre Miller. <laughs> I played against Jason William White Chocolate. I played against, you know, in college. I played against, you know, like I said, we played against so many. I played against... Uh, Travielso and uh, Padilla, when UMass had the two Puerto Rican guards. Yes, exactly. Like I, said, yep, I played yep, against yep. Uh, a strong Murray State team. I played against uh, St. Louis. Big shouts to Larry Hughes when he was there. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so it's it's every every night. Like I said, scheduling. Out. And I got a chance to play against my 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 childhood friend Rafe Austin in Arizona when he was at exactly. Fresno State. Hey, with that curious. team, with, I'm, I'm sorry, go my fault. With that team, with Chris Herron and Terrence Robinson and. Melvin Eli, Tremaine Folks, you mm -hmm. know, Cody Alexander, you know, I mean, Corey Alexander. So we got a chance, I got a chance to play, you know, against some great guards, man. Yeah. Do you think that your national schedule you played in high school helped you for that college transition of, you know, because, uh, you know, in, 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 the, sk the schedule you played in high school, it was no breaks, night after Yeah. Night like, after I, like I said, we, we, it's like it's recycling because I got a chance to play them, play against them or play against that school in high school and now and they might have been older than me like my sophomore year but then coming into college as a freshman these guys are juniors and i'm getting to revisit 
revisit again at, when we both on the same playing level in college. So, mm -hmm. yes, it prepared me. Like I said, everything Gary DeCesar did prepared me for college and for the pros. Like, you uh -huh. know, he, he, he had a vision where he was going to have me ready. You know, I still mm -hmm. use some of the stuff that he taught me when I was 16, 17 to now. Mm hmm so re regarding your um, transition into your professional career, did you have, um, what, what was your experience? Like, did you have your sight on trying to make it to the NBA and, you know, to talk about that? And then, you know, talk yes. about your, 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 um, your overseas and your, your, your pro path that you took. Yeah, like it was crazy. Like I said, I always had, like I said, I always had, you know, it's, it's if I could, if I should have, you know, everybody, a couple of guys, you know, with that dream, the NBA dream, when you hot, you hot, you leave, you know what I'm saying? So, it would have turned out different. But, yes, I had aspirations, you know, coming out. I thought I was going to get – I had a real connection with the Pacers. I'm thinking I was going to get picked by the Pacers. That's the year they uh, had Travis Bass and Mark Jackson. And then Jalen uh -huh. Rose that year was playing the point guard. So, on draft night, I thought, you know, I was going to get picked. I wound up going to Portsmouth after the season, getting a big shout-out to Ty Grant. I think he got MVP at Portsmouth. But I was – the uh, sports. I got sportsmanship at Portsmouth or whatever – didn't get invited to Chicago, had some workouts with some teams, but Indiana was, you know, I thought, you know, I didn't take a lot because they was like, okay. So I thought I was going to get picked or at least get uh, called into camps and stuff like that. So with that, it didn't work out. It didn't work out that year. So I didn't get drafted. I wound up going to the IBL. Okay. It was, a, it was the CBA or the IBL. It was either or. I wound up going to IBL in Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And playing with the Richmond Rhythm for a couple of months. And then I went on for Christmas. I went to uh, Turkey. Okay. I wound up playing with F.S. Pilsen. I wound up playing with the, the top team in Turkey at that time, F.S. Pilsen. And that's when Turkaloo, he do Turkaloo that I used to play with. Okay. Uh, yeah, he was there. This before he okay. came over to the States. And then gotcha. I had, uh, you know, so we wound up making, I didn't play that yet. I wound up sitting behind, you know, I wound up six figure, a six figure deal but not playing that much, whatever, wow. because I, I sat me up. The point guard, I was sitting behind a, a Croatian point guard that was getting ready for the league. Oh, okay. So that really, like, derailed my overseas thing yeah. that year because the next year, a lot of – I didn't have no stats, you know. And, yeah, you know, yeah. overseas, and over there, you got you to build a record. You got to you you produce, situation. you know. You got to yeah. – next situation. So the situations, me coming from there and, like I said, making six figures and bonuses and all that where – money that I never seen before to the next year, they, it's like I had to start back from square one. Mm -hmm. And also feeling, you know, feeling myself again that summer coming back after coming back from overseas, me having a great summer in New York City and me, me, me thinking, man, I got a shot. Let me, I want to stay close. I want to, you know, I want to try to make the NBA. Mm -hmm. So me doing tons and thousands of development leads and stuff like that in my, my, my soon-to-be wife is going to kill me if I don't mention this. You know, I played with the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. Never say that. Yeah, so that was one of my... Me trying to make it or whatever and growing up as a kid and getting a chance to play with the Harlem Globetrotters. No doubt. So I, I did that, and then I had a couple of stints or whatever, like you said, in, in the CBA and the ABA or whatever. And then, you know, out the blue moon, me playing so good them three months... <clears throat> In, I, in Richmond, Virginia, me coming out of school, playing so good, and, you know, me building a relationship with the G general manager. Let's fast forward it to the year. I'm sitting on I'm sitting on 142nd Street in New York, and my agent called me like, yo, New Orleans just invited you to training camp. The okay. Hornets. Uh -huh. Yeah, I didn't, go to, I didn't play no summer league, no nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and I wound up that year playing – in the summer league, my agent had built a free agent team, and they okay. put us in. You know, that's when you, you know, if your agent was who, you know, you had a good agent. It was connected, yeah. At that time, he had a free agent team, and we played in the NBA summer league. Okay. So I, I played against some of these guys or whatever and stuff like that, but I went home not thinking, you know, thinking about my next move, and I get a call like, New Orleans wants you to come. Like, they got a spot for you in training camp. Wow. So that day I went, moved to Long Island, Big shout out to Jerry Powell. He's one of the top trainers in America now. He trains everybody. Uh, he got me right. I had 30 days to get right before New Orleans uh, training camp. Went to New Orleans and was the last cut for the wow. New Orleans. Yeah, so that's where, you know, the story with me and Baron Davis, 
you know, that's where I, I got with Baron Davis and gained the respect of him and some of the guys with the Hornets. And that was my friendship. You know, that's why that's that's where our friendship started. Like uh-huh. he said something in me or whatever. And, you know, like I said, I was the last cut. I probably roster's got to be in at five o'clock. I got yeah. cut like 455, you know, <laughs> like it was, and I, and I felt that was the closest I got. Like I was right there, bro. I was, Dang. I felt good. I played some preseason games. I, I did well. I did well enough to make the team. Everybody, you know, when I got cut, everybody was shocked. Dang. So I, I went down, got, I got released. I went home for two weeks and they was like, man, don't go overseas. Stay and go to the development league. So I went to the develop, the D league now, AKA now it's the G league. Uh-huh. Went to development lead and wound up winning the D League championship with the Asheville Altitude, mm-hmm. and uh, wound up, you know, staying there for two years, thinking I'm going to get called up, led the lead, led the D League and assist two years in a row, or whatever. Then you know, came back again, full circle, where the team in France called one of my guys. I knew an agent over there, one of my guys that was going to be my agent anyway, but he was still a friend of the family. He wound up doing a deal for me in France. Uh-huh. And, you know, six, seven years in France, I, I led the lead and assist, led the lead and assist. Every year I was there, wound up winning a, a Pro B championship, got my team. Uh, my team got moved up to Pro A or whatever, signed a couple of deals or whatever, wound up winning the uh, skills, and tri- skills and Drills, uh, Skills and Drills, Thing two years in a row, I was skills and drills champion two years in a row. I got a chance to play against, you know, John Linehan and yeah. some of the great guys over there. That's when me and Linehan were at battles at VC yes. and Cholet. Yeah, you know, I didn't get, I wasn't fortunate to win a championship like he did. Uh-huh. And, and, you know what I'm saying? But you know, it was great to see some of my guys that you know was over there that made good careers out of it or whatever. Getting a chance to meet up with them again at that level. Uh huh. Did you did you at, at, at did you at any point you know, Phil, I mean, okay, you uh, you get close with the Hornets, but it doesn't happen. Then you get the G League and the D League, all this success. Do you Did you still have in your mind, like, feeling like, 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 or saying to yourself, what else is it do I have to prove? You yes, like I said, I, I went through I went through the transition. Like I said, I, I, I you know, with my background and, and stuff like that and, you know, things that, you know, I had in my background and, and things like that. So it was like, okay, I'm going to do whatever necessary like I said, I had braids. I was, you know, that's when I, I, Allen Iverson was doing it. You yeah. know, walking around with mink coats and jewelry, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, I'm Kareem Reed, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. So I, I cut all that out. Earrings out, cut yeah. my hair, start uh, dressing casual, mm-hmm. everything, changing my image. Gotcha, so I, gotcha. did every, I did everything possible. Wow. Whatever they said I had to do or what they – or they said that they didn't want me doing. Mm-hmm. I changed my back. I changed my friends. I never could. You never could change your friends. But I started hanging with a different type people that was like me or people uh-huh. that I, what I wanted to be like uh-huh. and everything. So it it, it really it, it was crushing that I did all that. Yeah. And I was so close or yeah. whatever. So and I and I stepped and I kept you know to that I couldn't take it no more. Where I had to raise my family and I turned down so much money. Mm-hmm. Ty Grant is on here. I, I big shout out to Tyrone Grant because he like told me like enough is enough. Like he really like grabbed me and took me. Him and my guy Mousy took me to the airport to to get out of there to go overseas. Because if they probably wouldn't have took me, I yeah. might not have. I might not have got on that plane. Wow. Like he he vouched for me. He was over there playing. Uh-huh. And he vouched for me. You know what I'm saying? Where they put money in my account before I even got over there. Uh huh. Look, you got legends on. Big shout out to Mucci. Mushi Mushi Norris, no doubt, no doubt. That's what's up. Legends in the building. Yeah, so, yep, so, yeah, he, he, they, they, you know, saying things like that. And even in New Orleans, when Barron and guys like that, when, you know, so much love, like, he was like, yo, you supposed to made it. Like, when I run into guys like, you know, the NBA guys, and they were like, man, you should have made it. You know what I'm saying? It just brings back memories, and it, it hurts. But, like, I got, I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Like, never, like I said, once again, when we say, Maybe it wasn't planned for me. No, they probably didn't want to give me them two, three millions. <laughs> you know, at that yeah, time, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, a kid from New York where I grew up with, with, with money like that, it might have been a different story. So, you know, yeah. God has a plan, and like I said, tr- I trust the process, and I'm working with kids now and getting into coaching. So, that's you know, that's that was my call. 
Yeah. Hey, real quick before I ask my next question, um, I got I got a, a Pennsylvania legend, a point guard that was in this class of, of, of 2020, Jameer Brickus. He played at Rip Hamilton's high school, Coatesville High School in PA. He's on here. He's going to LaSalle. Um, he's going to be playing at LaSalle. So shout out to the young guy, Jameer Brickus, super athletic. You know what I mean? Um, shout outs, man. Shout outs, man. I'm a, I love that. I love that Pennsylvania, D.C., all that, all that area, man. Like, man, you school wise, it's great, man. Like I said, I'm gonna be looking for you, man. No doubt. Hey, so, so, were you, um, so, so you go overseas? That's your path, you know. Just like you said, God has a plan, and this was your path. Where you? At what point did you become comfortable that you know, okay, this, this is gonna, this was my path, and and, and now, now I'm enjoying this. I'm making the best of it. Did you, did you ever get to that point, or you was just? I mean, you know, I guess, I guess, age wise, and and, and basically. The age where I said, okay, well, now right now, you know, it's yeah. a lot of young kids coming in, you know, and stuff like that. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of young kids coming out that I'm older than or whatever. And, of course, them, them checks and all the success that I was having, the success I was having over there. Mm -hmm. The success I was having over there, like I said, leading the lead and assist, living like a rock star. I'm not in the NBA, but I'm getting to live like them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With, you know. I can I can sit there and have a cup of coffee with them because I I got some money you know what no I'm doubt. saying like, like <laughs> no you doubt. Said, I felt I felt comfortable around them no you doubt you know what I'm saying no doubt so so curious so at what point did your um professional you know basketball career end and then how did you you know close that chapter of your life I mean I guess you know one of my fears growing going into it was I'm hearing stories where payments are late people ain't getting paid. Uh huh. So I go to a team where the first three months was good. I go, I, I, we, uh, I go there late actually, but the first two, I go there in November, October, because like the last couple of years of my career, I wasn't signing early. I was waiting and still hope for maybe an NBA job or, you know, uh -huh. still at the same time, even though I was like, it was in the back of my mind, but I'm like, I'm doing so good over here, you know. When it was the break, I know they they gotta see me. You know, I know they they's talking about me. I'm I'm in the magazines and stuff like that. So it was like I wouldn't take a job to October, like to the second win go through. And this year, this 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 typical year, I went over there late. I didn't have a job. I went over there late, and uh, first two months I should have sent something. You know what I'm saying? Because you know maybe one two days late or whatever stuff like that. I go home for Christmas and come back, and we're not winning that much. Mm -hmm. We're not winning. So it was like uh, they called and was like uh, they called and asked me, you know, what's going on or whatever, things like that. So I'm like, okay. When I got back, and once you know, once you're not winning, at the, you know, at the see, I, 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 I joined the team was like 2 and 10. Gotcha. But in the past, that 2 and 10, Kareem Reed digging you out that hole. Yeah, so, gotcha, you know gotcha. what I'm saying. At that time, people are going down, so it's not looking good. Gotcha. Which I should have just probably. I had a chance at Christmas to change teams. Uh huh. But I'm one of them guys. You start something, you finish it. Of course. My loyalty was everything. So I'm like, man, listen, they gave me a chance. Let me chill. Uh -huh. See if I can help help turn the season around. Gotcha. And it just got worse. You know, the sponsors dropped out or whatever. So now I'm in the south of France. Didn't get paid in two, three months. I'm having issues or my son is, you know, my son is crying out. He needs me or whatever. He's going through his stuff in New York City. And I'm I'm coming back to New York, flying back to New York or whatever to, to, to support my son or whatever. Then flying back up for a game. It was costing me money. It was, I come back and it was like, it was, it was, it was starting to become a problem. And I never yeah. got a chance to, you know, I always said I wasn't going to cheat the game. Uh-huh. I was always gonna get, you know, I was always gonna walk up walk out the game on my own two feet. Because uh -huh. I laughed at people that, you know, I made fun of or they talked about people that was just using the game. Yeah. And I didn't want to be one of those. So I was like, you know what? I just made a decision when, you know, one when it, the season was over or almost over, like, you know what? Just just release me. I I'm yeah. a I'm a I'm a chill. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got some family issues. It's time to spend time with my family and stuff like that and work on, you know, life after basketball. Gotcha, you, gotcha. You. Hey, so um I, I I just have I just have like one or two, like like two more questions. Then I'm gonna have a little QA, let, let the people uh, open up real quick. Um 
real quick, what uh, tell me about one thing we didn't talk about. Talk about the uh, just, just kind of veer off. Tell me about the the, the, uh, the Rucker experience with the entertainers, Fat Joe. So talk about talk about that real quick. Oh man, it was great. It was great. It was a uh, it was a spirit. It was experience that uh, you can't you can't turn down. Like it was the point where you know growing up in the in the, in the streets of New York that you know you see street ball guys are, are, are local celebrities you know yeah. or if you read you talk about joe hammond and things like that if you talk about guys legends that we had in the game that paved the way and me getting a chance at, at 14 15 years to play 155th rucker park when it was you go sit on crates and watch the game or whatever and, and things like that where you know shout out to rest in peace to greg marius where greg marius opened the door for inner city kids to display their talents mm -hmm. and i got to give all the all the glory to them you know what i'm saying like giving us a chance to play in your neighborhoods or bring nba players in your neighborhood to play against yeah or playing to, to bring the best guys from dc and chicago and everywhere to 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 Rutgers, to your home court mm -hmm. so that was that was legendary big shout out to norm richardson man my boy outlaw my brother outlaw my brother outlaw big shout out Man, you got everybody in here tonight, man. No doubt. It's because of you. I appreciate it, man. We bringing them out, mm -hmm. man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, overall, when you when you look back at your, your basketball journey um, and your path and, and kind of, you know, leading up to today, what has your, your journey taught you about life? You know, what has what basketball taught you? What has the game, you know, taught you? The game taught me so much. I mean, it gave me so much and it taught me so much, man. That's what it is. Like, I mean, I had... Like I said, I, I just named some guys. I've been naming guys, name dropping for the, the whole two hours I've been on, man. It's been a, they've been addition to my story, man. Like I said, you know, with every, with every, every book is different chapters. And I mean, like everybody, you know, had a different part in my life that anybody had a part of my life. I want to thank you. Like I said, it, it, it was needed. You know what I'm saying? The transition, me becoming somebody that nobody knew to somebody that everybody knew. Uh -huh. A kid from Burnside Avenue on ABC, not just for, not for, or CBS, not for drugs or nothing like that, for, for doing something positive in my neighborhood. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the trust in the process, you know, that was mm -hmm. it. You know, that's what I, that's what I live by now, you know, trust the process. Like, God has, God has it for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Or, or like, God doesn't make no mistakes. You know, it's just, maybe I didn't make it to the NBA. Like I said, you know, once again, congratulations to my guy, Shan. He played one season mm -hmm. in the NBA. Yep. And he got a, he got a shoe. Yep. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Anything can happen. He played 20 That's years awesome. without a shoe. Yeah. So big shout-outs to my brother, Sham God, man. Yep. So things like that. Without me making it to the NBA, mm -hmm. I made a bigger impact in my community than guys yep. that made it to the NBA. And I'm <laughs> thankful for that. You know what I'm okay. saying? When I go back to my neighborhood, it's Kareem. It's not it was, it's been fights where my guys, that's my guys, put me up against anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, yeah, with yeah. Things like that. The, the, the barbershop that. conversations. <laughs> yeah, the barbershop, the street corner conversations, the yeah. drink of beer or whatever. And my name is mentioned in some of the greats. And I didn't yes. and I didn't ha and I didn't make that I didn't make the NBA. I didn't yeah. make twenty, thirty, fifty million dollars. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I always got to be thankful for that. I had to, you know, so that's my thing now where me teaching the kids, you know, it's not about the NBA all the time. You know, everybody has a vision or whatever. So like, I got, I was thankful to get somebody to pay for my school, to believe in me, to pay for my education, to, to get me out of the Bronx, New York, to bring me all the way to Arkansas, to, to, to meet a whole nother, another side of the, to a whole side of the world. That I would have never got, you know, you know, think, you know, guys in my neighborhood never left New Jersey, never probably went to North, never went past New York. Uh huh. People I know that's fifty years old never left New York. Yeah. So, so things like that, which basketball paved the way, like basketball saved my life. Mm hmm. Hey, so I have, um, I, I just have, I just have uh, two more questions, um, and, and I just want to say I appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Um, start getting y'all questions ready because uh, you know start typing your questions. I'm gonna let Kareem. Um, he's gonna you know just start answering and responding to y'all questions. Um, one of the last things I wanted to know. Um, I, I don't like to use the word regrets, but do you have anything when you look back over your path 
any things that you wish that you could have done differently at all if you had a redo or nothing? I guess nothing. I wouldn't be Kareem Reed if I had, if it was perfect. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? Like my, my story, my, every, my trials and tribulations added to my story. Help the person I am today. You know, if everything was given to me, I, I wouldn't probably be this person. Gotcha. You know, like I said, I wouldn't, the, the, the roles, when I tell people on the, on the podcast, the roles might have been reversed. You know, some of my guys that's not here no longer, that's incarcerated or no longer on this earth, that could have been me. Gotcha. You know, so I guess, like I said, my path was my path. Gotcha. Your, your path is your path. My path helped me to shape who I am today. And, no I, doubt. I, and I appreciate it. So when I say that, I would never, you know, things, minor things, maybe here and there, whatever, but mm -hmm. the process. Yeah. You know, if I didn't go through this, I wouldn't, you know, if I didn't go through this, it wouldn't probably be that, you know, no or doubt. when I do reach something, if I reach what I wanted, you know, what my goals, I might not have been able to fulfill or reach my goals if it was if it was given to me another way yeah got you so last question man before we get into the q a with the people um what advice um just like i said earlier we had um my man uh from pa you know some kids class of 2020 class of 2022 a kid by the name of jameer brickis um my man chance westry's on um he's actually going to be going out to um sierra canyon um transferring from pa out to sierra canyon and play with you know uh, you know, that, that crew out there. But to the younger generation that are watching right now, what advice do you have for them just about basketball, you know, their, their journey and you're trying to... I mean, you are, I mean life, you life period. I mean, New York right now, we mourning somebody. Uh, rest in peace to, you know, B. Diddy, you know, a guy that just graduated Friday, man. It was a kid that graduated wow. from from my area, was off to get ready to go to college. On His birthday was next week, getting ready to, you know, go to school, to college, man. Wow. And, uh, and got killed, you know. I think uh, I've seen that. I think I've seen that yeah. on Instagram. So, so people give yeah. some shout outs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so I've seen Sunday, that. you know what I'm saying? So wow. things like that, man. You you going to a going away cookout and you know, last time your mom see you talking about you going to cookout, you be back, ma. And for them not to see their child again, man. So wow. my thing is to be careful, man. To be careful out there. Yeah. Anywhere you at, you know, remember you're basketball players. This is what you want to do, like you know, picking the right crowd of kids to hang around, your friends. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm thankful to have friends that I had in my life where if something was happening, they were smart enough to tell me, go home, get out of here. Uh -huh. You know, don't come around today. You know what I'm saying? But now it, it's it's different with uh -huh. the social media, these these beefs and stuff like that. I, I think I was like, you know, when they talk about the kid Achilles Carr or Deron Wagner or guys that's in their community, like, I was grateful to when things were going on in my neighborhood, I maybe didn't stop it, but I controlled it because I took people out the neighborhood to support me to watch basketball. You know what I'm saying? Where if they was in the hood, things might have happened. Uh -huh. So my thing is, you know what I'm saying? Like, if this is what you want to do, 100% basketball in school get out of here. Like I said, I was grateful to leave two days after my graduation, because that could have been me when we talk yeah. about road reversals. Uh -huh. So with that, man, just you know, be thank thankful for God and stuff like that, and, and, and do what you do. Like, if you're a bat, like I said, and I sent, you know, these, we you know, I was talking to somebody, these, 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 you know, doing it for the gram, and, and doing this, and this, everything's becoming Instagram or Twitter, Facebook, man. You kids, you kids, live your life, man. Live your life Respect your parents. Listen to, you know, listen to people that, that has have done it or the same. You know, that's why my story, I be wanting to tell my story because I was one of those kids that could have got caught up in everything. Uh -huh. Like I tell my son, I tell, you know, other people, kids, like, wow. Yeah, I've been done. I've been down that road before. I've been, I did, I did it all, man. Uh -huh. And for me to still be here, man, it's a blessing, man. For me to, to share my story, for me to, to give back to these kids, you know, it's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I didn't make it to the NBA, but God has me here for a reason, and I no want doubt. to fulfill, fulfill my dream. No doubt, no doubt. Well, hey, I, I'm on that note, man, I am just want to let you know I appreciate you. Thanks so much for being transparent. Thanks for sharing your story, man. Um, you know, just like I said, I saw you in the – I mean, I heard about you, you know, in, in, during your high school days. I saw you in the McDonald's All-American game. So to be sitting here with you right now, man, just kind of going back and forth, it's, it's, it's definitely a dream for me, man. So thank you for your contribution. Thanks for, you know, contributing to Legends Week, man. And, um, you know, I just can't thank you enough, man. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, too, man, for having me, man.
for sure. Hey, well, we're gonna get right into a couple of these questions. My man, um, 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 LL twenty third wants to know. He said, "Y'all beat Jason Kidd uh, down Kiss Me, Florida, but how'd y'all let him score uh, 30, 33 points in thirteen minutes, having six in the third? Um, I guess he yeah. How, how he said, how'd y'all let him score 30, 33 in, in, in thirteen minutes? You're talking about the best player at that time. He's the best country. He's the best point guard. You no know, best play in the country. Yeah, like, you can't contain people like that. He's a hall of fame. <laughs> He's a hall of fame. What are you? What are you talking about, bro? Look, I know who that is. What are you talking about, bro? Like <laughs> 30, thirty-three with a loss. What that mean? I don't know. That's thirty-three. Right. He lost. He lost. Bro, he lost. Um, Ocean one forty nine said, um, "How big was the chip on your shoulder coming up when you were?" Um, a lot of times underrated against Steph, Sham, Todd Miles. Like I said, it was the fruit to my fire, man. That's what I said. I I, I went like it, it was bad, man. Coach De Caesar used to put clippings in my pizza. I opened my locker. He had pictures of Felipe, or if somebody, you know, he was a he was the king of uh, board material. When they call it, you know, board, he was the king of that. If it was something, a newspaper article, a clipping, uh, Jason Kidd on the front of. Uh, Celastic Sports, anything was that's what he did. No doubt. Um, Jay Livingston, um, J Jay Living, uh, he said he he said he remembers the Marble Hill days in the early nineties. Tell me about that. Yes, I mean it was great. Like I said, I, I big shout out to uh, you know Chris Rowley and the Marble Hill family or whatever. Like I used to come up there and 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 have so much fun. You know, we used to bring you know me and sham came up there me and sham had a we played on the same team up there you know they i made like i said once again with my mm -hmm. notoriety or whatever playing with the house team brought other teams to go get their crews so uh -huh. i helped you know same way they helped me display my talent i brought different people in their neighborhoods because they wanted to play against me no doubt all right hey we got we got the legend on here kareem reed any questions um you know, type some some really good questions. Uh, a couple more questions before we tune out. Hey, Dykeman Drew, Dykeman Drew, Dykeman Drew. Respect, respect, Dykeman Drew. No doubt, much respect. Hey, what do you think about the whole, um, you know, about the whole transfer portal, you know, transfer portal thing? Just this year, it's just been crazy with like, you know, the college transfer portal guys jumping ship like. And then and one thing that's interesting, um, even I, I've seen guys transferring or entering into the portal when they're actually having success where they are, like really good success. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, like you said, once again, we're talking about picking the right school. And some of those might have been the schools that you should have picked in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes them power fives, not saying you can't play in there, but mm -hmm. you got to go somewhere you could be successful at. Like, once I, when I talk about the SEC in Arkansas and the schools that I had was fitting to my, to, my, to my game style. Not saying your talent, but, you know what I'm saying, you might not be able to display your talent with a school – like, you know, if if I go to Syracuse, uh huh, come on, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, or Stefan goes to Syracuse, you know, or Rafer doesn't go to Fresno, or any kid, LeBron picks, you know, Zion picks another school. I mean, you know, some people are diamonds in the rough where you're going you're gonna to be able to play everywhere, but you have to pick your schools accordingly uh -huh. where you fit at, where you, where you fit at, not just for the name of the school. Uh huh. what happens, you know, you pick, sometimes you go with the name of the school and that's not it. You can't play there. And then you're in the transfer portal. But it's getting ready to get, it's getting ready to get crazy where you don't even have to sit out no more. They're giving you a, a, a new rule where it's like, whatever. You can like, go right away. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you go right away. Like, you ain't got to tell the school, like, I'm out. Uh huh. You know, so that's what's going to make it crazier. You know, they, you know, they making these, they making these different. Mm hmm. Hey, somebody, um, had, um, Somebody had asked, um, uh, uh, like, like, like in the last hour. Do you remember playing in like a Philly versus New York kind of thing against like Rashid Bay, New Arnold, and them guys? You remember, remember that game at all? I think we played down there in Philly. I think. I think so. You possibly yeah, I, I think yeah. I, I know some of them guys or whatever, but I mean, it was just like after. Yeah. This was like after we. Uh, I think we came down during the day or whatever. Okay. But I, I don't really, I don't recall that game. Got you. Um, Dy Dykeman Drew wanted to know most points you ever score. You talked about that in the ten random questions. It was like seventy or eight seventy. Like, yeah, seventy on, on yeah on Burnside. It was in my uh, you know in my memorial tournament actually where I'm getting ready to bring it back to my neighborhood. The Manzi invitation will be back, going off. Kareem will will bring it back. Got you. Um, Ocean One Forty Nine also said uh, on a final note. 
let Reem know Yans always respected his game, and I loved I loved his emergence because that junior uh, and senior year at Rays uh, was was epic. That's my guy right there. Big shout out to Cortland Avenue, man. Like Yams, like he know it. He's like family. Like I said, everybody that's that's that's, that's logging on and, and telling stories, they know me. They close. You know what I'm saying? So they bringing up stories. Like you know, like I said, I did it for them. Like I said, they they were fortunate to stand on that line, and they. I felt that it was like a show. Like I think one of the NBA guys said, I showed up every day because people paid the mission, sat on, stand on them lines to see me play. So I felt like I owed it to give everybody my uh, my 100% or put on the show for everybody that, you know, that came out there. No doubt. Hey, so uh, one, one, one thing that popped in my mind, um, for kids that are considering schools, if they have like a checklist of things, what are some things that, you know, really good players should consider so they don't find themselves transferring? You know what I'm saying? What, what should they consider when they're choosing a school? I guess, well, you know, sometimes the coach. That's, that's really what it is, the, the coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the relationship you have with the coaching staff. You know, like the, the relationship and the communication with the coaching staff, first off, mm -hmm. you know, that, that you should have. Second is if you fit in. You know, do I fit in? Do I see myself playing with these guys and, and and the third thing for me was while you were at the school can you get other people to come play with you gotcha you know and that's what it was like do you want people want to want to play with you you got to be there you're going you know now it's different you know some of these guys are one and done or whatever but you know if you want them guys that are going to be at a school four years you got to be a recruiter too you got to help your school recruit some of these kids that you want to play with or man i want to play with this kid you got to make your situation better. And that's what yeah. I was good on. Like, you know, if I if they wanted a kid, they know, well, Kareem got to be the host. No doubt. <laughs> Kareem no was doubt. Gonna, you know, I'm going to show them. Or I'm, you know, stuff, things like that, where no they're going to want to be close to the point guard. And I'm, of course. I'm diming them like the way I'm diming them. The general, the floor general. You, yeah, you definitely want to get in close with the general. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, um, what, that's pretty much all I have, man. Is there anything um, else that you want to say or any shout-outs you want to give? Anything you want to say before we close out? Nah, just shout outs. I mean, man, let's bring, you know, I know through this pandemic and all that, like it's it's it's, it's slow, man, and stuff like that. We don't know if we're gonna have sports, but things like that. But man, let's let's stay positive, man. Let's let's stay healthy. Let's you know, let's 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 give it up to the OGs. You know what I'm saying? Much respect to all the OGs that that paved the way for me, myself, and all the guys that's coming up under me or whatever, man. I'm here. My handle's on here. I am Kareem Reed. If you need to talk, you need some, you know, you need some advice, help picking schools, you, or you just want to talk about anything, man. Let's, let, I'm here for you, man. It's just me here at, at any cause, man. I'm here for the cause. No doubt. Help. He was on. I definitely got to get. Uh, oh man, he get. Ah, he tapped out. Hey, well, um, hopefully he comes back on. But if not, um, that was pretty much it, man. Um, the legend Kareem Reed, man. Um, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, for anybody who missed the first hour, um, after after I, after I stopped this broadcast, I'm actually going to um, upload the entire uh, broadcast to my YouTube channel. Um, uh, so if you go on YouTube, it's Raw Sports Films on YouTube. Same same name as the uh, YouTube as uh, the uh, Instagram page. Um, the website as well, RawSports.TV. Um, I'm definitely going to try to get. What's up? What's up, big dog? Um, definitely going to try to get. Um, God Sham got on, man. He was on. The, this this broadcast was crazy, man. The legends bring the legends out. Legends Week is definitely going down. Um, Dyke McDrew, appreciate you, man. God bless you, man. Um, for anyone um, uh, um, that, that that's tuning in, that, that plans on tuning in for the rest of this Legends Week, um, tomorrow I got a big one. I got um, Shea Cotton on tomorrow. It's definitely going to be crazy. Shea Cotton, if you know anything about the man child, you know, you know, LeBron James, before LeBron James, Shea Cotton is going to be on Legends Week with Big Star tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Make sure you come back and tune in. If you're not, if you're watching this and you're not, um, you know, following the Instagram page, make sure you follow me right now. Um, Jay's Living, I appreciate the follow. Much love, much support. I appreciate it. Um, 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 Big Star's Lost Tapes. Um, if you're interested, if you like, you know, you, you enjoy, like, um, classic high school games, it's a section on my website, um, rawsports.tv. It's nothing but full high school games. I got like some Allen Iverson high school game game on there. You know, Kevin Garnett game, Kobe game, um, tons and tons of tons of classic high school games, man. So I'm definitely going to try to um, reach out to, um, not try, but I'm going to reach out to Kareem and see if I can possibly get some of them um, St. Raymond's games if, if they're out there so I can, um, you know, get them on the, on the website and on the YouTube channel. So I uh, appreciate y'all tuning in, man. 
Um, oh, no doubt. Jay's living. We, we got to talk, man. We, we, we got some stories. We got to talk, man. Um, but I appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Um, make sure y'all come back tomorrow, 8 o'clock. I'm going to have my man Shay Cotton on. Um, you know, going to talk about his career, talk about, you know, his journey. Um, talk about the documentary that just dropped, uh, Man Child. And um, it's pretty much that, man. So God bless y'all. Appreciate y'all. You know, y'all be safe um, out here in these streets, man. And, um, you know, keep doing what y'all do. All right. Peace.